Пошли. Все в месте. Какие ваши доказательства? Кокаином. Hey, Welcome folks. to uh, the Leftist Mafia. This is episode seven. Uh, so, if, if you're new to the show, it's very laid back, very free form. So right now, it's just me and Mike, and uh, Lance is uh, away for a second. We're gonna have Ole in here. We're gonna have Bender. I believe Illuminati is. Uh, she still doesn't have internet um, at her new place, so she's not uh, here this week. But mm -hmm. uh, I believe we also may be having a special guest. But yeah. yeah, I'm not sure about the status of that. Um, I yeah. do remember Blair saying that she'll be back on the 30th, which is when Comcast will give her internet. And dealing with Comcast is no fun. So I'm so sorry, Blair. Love to you. But that sounds like a headache. <laughs> uh, yeah. M moving in general is just the worst. Yeah, it's awful. Um, right, I've so, heard nothing but bad things about Comcast. I've heard that it's an absolute nightmare from, yes. from American friends. Yeah, part of the problem is that they have monopolies almost in every single city where they're at. So if you if you have a complaint and you know you can't switch to anyone else because that's it. So you've got to suck it up. So this week we're streaming on Facebook. And look at the very first, first Facebook comment we have. What is arrest, let me see. arrest dirty dirtbag Joe Brandon and Hunter save America? <laughs> nice, <laughs> nice. Finally, someone said it. Hey, LA, how's it going? Oh my god. Hey, go. LA, what's up? I log on and let's go to hair. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I love the Facebook. Shout out to the Facebook audience. Facebook my Facebook is audience is ninety percent conservative, and they just keep that page afloat. I love you all. Nice. Mine is 90% needs therapy. Like, they're just... Oh, yummy. I did my, uh, I did my homework no, over not. the weekend. I watched uh, Abbott Elementary. Like you asked. Me too! Yes, you yeah. did? You liked it's, it? It's cute as fuck. It's such an adorable show. Oh, my God. Good. Yeah. yeah. I yeah. love no, it. I'm, I'm quite smitten. Uh, I, what I, um, so I used to work in film and television back in the day before I was uh, an internet silly man. And uh, the oh, hardest so thing to do, oh, mm. nice. The, the hardest thing to do is pilots. Like pilots are so tough to write because you got like 20 minutes to introduce all the characters, make everyone fall in love with them, uh, be funny and entertaining and then leave and then make someone want to watch it again. And like the, the pilot for that show, it's like, it's very, very good. It's, it's very punchy. Mm -hmm. It's funny. Uh, gets you to like fall in love with all the characters. It was like, it was well done. Oh, yeah, I love that. Abbott Elementary is great. I'm so glad you liked it. I told you you would. It's so good. Uh, yeah, I got only to like episode four, I think, but I absolutely love it. And I fucking love the principal. She is oh, so yeah. hilarious. She's so funny. She, she is, okay, yeah. thank you. She's the star of the show. Ava she is the yeah. star. No, no, so I laughed. So, so I don't funny. know why, but I laughed so hard when that uh, when the dude came in and he's talking about, well, it's so hot because of climate change. And she's like, <coughs> nerd. Like that made me laugh so hard. Like she's so fucking hilarious. <laughs> she, she, she follows me on Twitter. Does she really? Oh, no way. Uh, oh, no way. What? Oh, that's a huge get. Yeah, that's, that's, that's bigger than Matt Binder. That, yeah, that's bigger than the Matt Binder. Matt Binder follows me on Twitter I, I, now. I, I, so. I had to fight harder for Binder, though. I had to fight for that follow. So. <laughs> your, your, mic's, your mic's not on. I, My I, mic's not on? No, I don't think so. Oh, probably not. It's, yeah, it's probably the computer mic. Mm. 
Uh, yeah, I'm curious. Who's your biggest follows? My biggest follows? Yeah. Um, let's see who follows me. AOC. Um, John Cena. <laughs> um, John Cena. I have that one too, but he follows like a lot of people. Like He's a like a weird one. Guy, right? so, yeah. Like, um, <laughs> I'm gonna check that. Hold on, I have to go, honestly. I have to go check that. Of, let me see. To like, she does follow me. What? Really happy about. And I don't Let's follow see. him. <laughs> I gotta. Follow He's probably. I, I can't believe Mike Fury doesn't, doesn't follow me on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> no like, shit. Brandon, like a lot of a lot of people follow me. Honestly, I mean, I'm trying to think. Like, yeah, like Susan Saranda. I think is a big count when I see that. Um, I wonder if she still follows me. I feel like uh, I haven't heard oh, from her recently. I should check that one, too. I'm pretty sure she still follows me. He does. Good. I just feel she like well, <laughs> there was a time when it was very clear that that Mr. Jimbo was going really fucking crazy. And Sarandon, who's still like on the... I couldn't tell where she stood <laughs> on what? Jimmy Dore versus like reality. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> Thankfully, she, she is, seems uh, like she's pretty yeah, thankfully grounded. she seems like she's grounded, yes. Yeah. I feel like my so, biggest uh, follows are like AOC and um and uh Susan Sarandon and uh I'm blanking uh, on uh, John John Cusack. That's that's probably like one of the biggest because he he's so I got, nice I got John too. Cusack too. He yeah. interacts all the time and stuff. Like I love him. Let me see. I don't know, like Sarah Silverman, Jesse Williams. That's big. I don't think I have Sarah Silverman. I have Jesse Williams. Um, I'm trying to think. I kinda honestly, you ever have like like the ones, the things that make you excited are like different than the ones that are like I wish I knew too, like a lot of the the big like politicians and journalists that'll follow me and I'll only know as big as my friend will be like, come on me. And I'll be like, oh, okay, I'll follow back. All right, my bad. I didn't realize. Like, all right, um Yeah, no, I'm trying to think. Oh, Bender, look at you. Yeah. was even on time. Hello. I got him quick this week, too. He came in. I'm like, Bender's there. In. Like, <laughs> no, no waiting room. Look, we love it. We love it. So what do you what want to talk about? Missed? What, are we, what are we talking about? Oh, we haven't started yet? We're just we were talking about yeah. small yeah. followers are. Yeah. yeah, we're bragging about our, our biggest follows. <laughs> We're we're doing celebrity flexing. It's pretty embarrassing. Yeah, it is. Uh, it really is cringe. I'm so sorry. I didn't yeah. even remember yeah. people. I'm like... It wasn't me. It was so, me. I uh, I was saying at the beginning of this when I first began streaming, we are streaming on Facebook this week as well as YouTube and Twitter. So Facebook is uh, a very different audience. Uh, the first chat that we got from Facebook was someone saying arrest uh, Joe Brandon and Hunter Biden's <laughs> to give you <laughs> an idea. Yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah! Hell yeah! <laughs> so uh, it's a very interesting place that we Hi, are, are at. Brother. But... <laughs> Hi, Mark. <laughs> I feel like Ooh. can I read this uh, comment? Actually, I could put it on the screen. Um, I really like this comment here. Offshore accounts matter. Ask Nacho Cheese anymore. Nazi Nancy. Like, I don't <laughs> even know what this means, but I love it so much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a new one. For me. Nacho Nancy. Uh. <laughs> so Nacho Nazi Nancy. <laughs> Sorry, Nacho Nazi Nancy. <laughs> At some point, we can talk about Crowder because th this shit's hilarious. It's cracking yeah. me up. Yes. Um, the rest of you though decide. I don't know what should we start with. We can start with something heavier. Uh, I'm hearing a little echo of me. I'm not sure if that what's happening there. I don't hear you echoing. Then it's probably you. <laughs> oh, word, is it me? Am I echoing? No, I might be no, echoing, echoing up from your end. It's okay. It's it's fine you're, now. You're not um, echoing. I don't hear you. It sounds good. Yeah, I'll move my mic away just in case it's me. But um, yeah, oh, I don't know. So, I, uh, I, apart from Crowder, oh, whatever. Today. Can I, well, uh, we're going to talk about Crowder a bunch, I guess. Can I, can I start with a question to Matt Binder? Because I've been able to ask this to you, and you know a lot about uh, uh, mechanics that go on, uh, and you're you're a real uh, urinalist, unlike the rest of us. Uh, so um, when it comes to the uh, Speaker of the House, Kevin McCarthy, and, and the 15th votes that it took, there's a lot of people on what some might describe as the clown shoe side of the internet right now, uh, taking a victory lap, saying that forced the vote not only was effective, but it it rendered uh, uh, the, the once uh, far-right extremists now powerful members of the republican party i was i was curious to know your analysis of of what took place and, and what actually happened and what they my, won my my feelings on forced to vote after what happened or what no, no not, not, not just your feelings but like can you explain what happened like what what were the real gains for people like marjorie taylor green and um 
and uh, I guess the losses for society in general? Well, apparently they got some concessions about what uh, is going to be voted on on the House floor. Uh, they got some committee, um, you know, uh, they were put on uh, some of them were put on committees that they were angling for. Um, but other than that, I mean, I don't see what, what is that. We'll have to wait and see what actually comes out of it. I mean, just, just they just got promised things. Some of them did get committee spots, but also people like George Santos got committee uh, uh, various uh, spots on committees because they just don't have the the numbers to be screwing around. So they got to make everybody uh, happy, to be quite frank. It's not like uh, those 15 got something the others didn't, at least not so far. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anything else? <laughs> Uh, Lance, I, mean, I, mean, that, that, that's all, I I just want to know Matt Binder's opinion on that. I mean, the difference, I was it all go the down. I was like, I was like, he, he well, he usually like you have a really keen sense for numbers and stuff. And like for me, I was like, uh, I, I know the original idea was that you know they leverage what soft power they have to get a ceremonial vote on force the vote, even though they knew it would be DOA by the Senate, right? Like the Senate would never pass it through, but they'd be able to get a ceremonial vote. And to me, a ceremonial vote is kind of pointless because people won't really give you their true feelings because it doesn't matter. They know it could be like you know I can just ceremonially say yes i support this knowing that it won't actually come to pass um but in this case it seems like they kind of looked out for themselves like the far right extremists and like you know the guy accused of well, uh yeah. the human trafficking the the the, the q anon lady all, all of them now have pretty decidedly more powerful positions as a result of holding I mean, Kevin we'll McCarthy to, hostage right we'll really have to wait and see if anything comes out of it i mean the idea that this proved forced to vote anything is kind of absurd because nothing's happened I no, mean, I that, they yeah. got some paper promises. They got some committee uh, spots. I mean, so did the squad. They were put on various yeah, committees. Exactly. Um, yeah, yeah. It's not they like the they were thing. left out completely. Like, we don't know what went on behind the scenes exactly because the mm -hmm. difference is the Republicans aired their grievances, whereas right. the progressive members of the House uh, went and worked with and negotiated politics. with Democrats mm -hmm. behind the scenes. Um, mm -hmm. So they would. I mean, but there's also very different crowds, too. You have to understand that, uh, you know, uh, in the Republican base, there is a uh, a large group of base uh, supporters like voters who are far right and like what the far right does. I mean, look how they elected Donald Trump. Uh, mm -hmm. Democrats don't have that. The Democratic base is fairly happy with their Democrats. I mean, it sucks, but. That's just mm -hmm. the reality of the situation. And yeah. uh, maybe it uh, was good for those 15 right wingers to speak to that Republican, that far right base with the Republicans because they're much larger, whereas the squad probably would have shot themselves in the foot if they basically were standing in the way of Nancy Pelosi to, to the Democratic mm -hmm. base voters. There's just not the same uh, dynamics going on in either party. Like you have to look at what's mm -hmm. going on and strategize based on that. <laughs> Uh, it's that simple. Yeah, I kind of feel like the squad doesn't really know how to play politics as well. Um, they kind of get steamrolled by Democratic Party leadership. And like one one thing out of the force to vote movement is, that I absolutely unequivocally agree with is that overall the squad needs to be more antagonistic towards leadership. And every once in a while, you'll see like a good tweet where AOC will vaguely call out leadership. But overall, I, like, I want them to challenge leadership more and the Democratic Party establishment, but we just, we don't get that. Um, and so that is disappointing. And I, I do agree with the force the vote crowd on that. They just, well, they, they have they to, they still, enough. they have to do it in a way that isn't going to alienate um, the the people they're trying to win over, to be quite frank. Like, uh, oh, the, yeah, the, the, the normies the right, wouldn't like if they were defiant to leadership, unlike right, with the Republican Party. Which, right. The right loves dynamic. that shit. Whereas mm -hmm. the Democratic base does not. Um, right. So you have to like, yeah, they, they, they need to pick their fights. They need to stand up to uh, Democratic leadership, but also not do it in a way that gets around the clock week long coverage of how they're undermining the party, like the 15 right wingers on the Republican side did, where, you know, they did definitely speak to their base and got support from them, but to uh, the rest of the people who were paying attention, they made themselves look uh, dumb. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
that was that was my read. I was just curious if I was I was correct in my assessment. So I'm glad I'm validated. That's that's what I came here for, and I'm happy to have that feeling. Yeah. Well, I'm glad I could. <laughs> I'm glad I could help you feel good about yourself. You could validate me. Thank you. Thank you for validating <laughs> me, Matt Binder. I appreciate it. It's good to feel validated every once in a while. You're welcome. I appre I appreciate you appreciating me for validating you. <laughs> so what else is going on this week? Olay, what's uh what's been going on in your world? What have you uh been following or what stood out to you? Any news, any honestly any, any no, things? No, nothing actually. I was just reading our chat and I saw I see people screaming about like, are y'all gonna talk about Crowder? And I'm like, who is that? So I was just <laughs> I've been I've been talking about that for the past like hour and a half. Should we like, just start with Crowder? Should we just do Crowder then? back and forth? I think we oh, should. Like, That's what's on okay. everyone's I'm minds. Yeah. Okay. We could do and some that Crowder. Candace Owens um, jumped in. Just like with just like with the the uh, the speaker fight, the people want us to talk about something. And being that we are good progressives, <laughs> we're going to give the people exactly what they want and not challenge anyone on that. So there you go. <laughs> All right. So if, you, if you'd like, I could intro this. I did a video on this today. I'm breaking this shit down. I watched the full hour from Daily Wire and the full 30 minutes from Steven Crowder. Basically, right now, there's a bit of a feud going on between Steven Crowder and the Daily Wire. Steven Crowder was with Blaze TV, a conservative network. He no longer is as of the beginning of this year. So he was offered a contract with the Daily Wire for $50 million over four years. $12.5 million a year. That is more than Anderson Cooper makes at CNN, who apparently or makes Tucker $12 Carlson. million. Or, or Tucker, apparently, as well. Uh, so well, that's, we're because talking... mainstream, that's because mainstream media is not playing with the money we're playing with here in why India. though oh yeah <laughs> why why oh, why well cucked by the matrix that's why why are they offering him so much money though why he uh it's hard to say because he's not worth that much I, I will to be clear it's 12 million and crowder takes care of the production costs so crowder has like i think like six seven people on staff so they're they're the ones that do you know the editing, the shooting, all that stuff. So it's it's twelve million or twelve and a half million for the whole group for uh, a year. But even still, is he worth that much money? <laughs> so no. basically, Stephen Crowder came out pissed off about this offer that he got from Daily hold Wire, on. fifty Wait. million. What do you mean? Hold on, hold on. Excuse right? Me. Yes. Wait, what? Mad about the money? Yes, he's, he's not, hold on. not just the yeah. money. He's so specifically, he's mad that there are. There are elements in the contract saying, hey, if you are taken off of YouTube, well, then we have to deduct a certain amount off of the contract because we no longer are making any money back from you. So that applies to, you know, Spotify, oh, you, uh, Facebook, be, whatever. Because he's scared because so, he want to be a bigot freely, right? Yes, yes exactly. exactly. He wants the money without any strings attached. As if, yes. why, why would they give him 50 million and not expect to recoup the cost at all? Like, yeah. I still, or, so or I, protection. I, like it's yeah. such standard boilerplate. Like this is what a major yeah. entertainment corporation is going to do. You are an asset. Steven Crowder is the asset. They're going to insulate themselves from potential risk because they know they see in his like catalog he's going to be racist for money or transphobic for money. That's, that's his. I mean, shit, that's, you know, that's, and that's also to the person in the comments who said it was Illuminati. Okay, she is. Her internet wasn't set up. She'll be. She'll be here next week though. Mm -hmm. She just back. moved. She'll come so, back more. Yeah. yeah. So um, I have a a clip having to do with this specific point of Crowder taking issue with some of the part, parts in the contract. Let me play this here, if I can. No, that's not it. Wait, here, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Don't sign something that has another $100,000 daily penalty if it's not signed off on beforehand. This is the best part. You get a sick... You get hit by a car, you have a sick day, you could lose $100,000 a day. Hey, anyone wonder why there's burnout in this? Anyone wonder why you have kids come up oh, and they leave? Break. And never to come back? <laughs> yeah. You think if you had that kind of a penalty, you think if someone said, hey, we're going to penalize you $10,000? Every day you miss coming into work, you think you'd be stressed? <laughs> what wow. world... It's crowd it's living it. Every know, single person <laughs> deals with this shit. They don't lose. Oh, first of all, they're not making that 10 is, grand. They're that not is making my, 10 grand a day. That is my fucking pet peeve. That's what I'm sick of with all these rich motherfuckers. No, it's, it's upsetting. Like, where is the self-awareness? 
have your rich people problems amongst rich people. Like you see what I'm saying? Like you can't be aware. Like come on, like come on, bro. Like why must they try to reframe all these rich ass problems? Like what are you like? How stressed you gonna be? Like what? What? <laughs> What you're fine, you want you what, bro? You're fine is more money than people are making for what do you who the fuck do you think you're addressing? Yeah, like, like I, I, I was like, was like people would lose a finger for a million dollars. Like people would actually cut off their fingers for a million dollars. I would let them like, take <laughs> one of my arms for <laughs> at least five million. <laughs> like they, they can just take an arm. So Mike, you gotta play video games. Right? So I was trying that. to keep these. <laughs> you, you sign oh, that, crazier that contracts. Quickly. All right, we're doing this. We're going. You here. sign crazier <laughs> contracts for damn freelance agreements. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, like oh, it's oh, not God. even. Oh, what do you? I, I have been fleeced so many times. Are you kidding me, Crowder? Like, what the that's, fuck? That's yeah. it, it, and he called it a slave contract. Yes. He called it a yes. slave yes. contract, yes. a fifty yeah. million dollar yeah. contract. Yeah. And mad. by the way, oh, by the, by the way, in Daily Wire's video, so the Daily Wire video, the the co CEO is the guy in, the, in that in that video. I'll show you a clip from that in a second as well. Mm -hmm. um, he says that 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 was the floor, that he's open to negotiation to give yeah. Crowder more than fifty right. million over four years. <laughs> fifty million was just for negotiation purposes. He. He said, so actually, let me play this, this clip, because this also exposes how Crowder is, he has claimed his entire life that he is independent, answers, <laughs> answers to absolutely uh, nobody, yet um, in this video, as I am uh, buying time as I get it out here, this, <laughs> he completely exposes himself for being an individual who, here you go, check this out. Who is not, in fact, independent? Mm -hmm. uh, we don't have audio. So that don't work no more. I'm not getting any audio. Oh, you're not getting audio? No. Are you not? I'm not. I'm not either. Oh, weird. What the? Okay, let me deal with that <laughs> um. as we continue discussing Stephen Crowder. Basically, if I can't get the audio on this, um, this co-creator of the Daily Wire is uh, our co-CEO, is explaining all the billionaires that have backed Steven Crowder over the years. So he mentions three of them here. He talks about how ever since he has known Steven Crowder, he has he has worked for someone else. And he names one billionaire, then another billionaire, then another billionaire. <laughs> Crowder has never actually been independent, which goes to the point that this is why Crowder is so incensed by this contract, because he has never... He has always had wealthy benefactors that have no strings attached. And now finally, he has to actually work for a real corporation, the shit that he props up every single day. He's very pro-capitalism when it comes to his policies. But all of a sudden, he sees a real contract and he's freaking out because he realizes this is what a real contract is. Or at least he he, he doesn't realize this is what a real contract is. He thinks this is crazy. But this and, is just and the guy very that normal. Knew, he's so reasonable, by the way. He explains yes. in like the <laughs> plainest terms. He's like, yeah. I'm just trying to say that like we want to insulate ourselves. This is an investment. That's that's all this is. This is nothing personal. We're against big tech. We're not working for big tech. What are you talking about? Mm -hmm. Do you want me to try to share the clip, David? Yeah, you try. On my end? I don't know if that'll make a difference, but I will try. I think it was because I was showing the window and not the actual tab. That may have been the problem. Let's see. If you can share the tab. The, the issue with my computer is uh, that there's weird audio with with the uh, with my Mac. Okay, let me try to see if this works. Don't enjoy the same luxuries that we do of being independent. Stephen, the whole time I've known him, has worked for someone else. He was paid by people. Can you all hear that? Yeah. 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 Okay. JTV when I met him, which was owned by a billionaire at the time. Then he was paid by CRTV for a number of years, which was owned by a billionaire uh, at the time. Then he was paid by The Blaze, which was subsidized by a billionaire. And he didn't necessarily have to be profitable. And he doesn't know for a fact that he was profitable. Because, as he has said very publicly, all those companies, none of them really shared all the information about what was happening with them. So Stephen feels very certain that his show was always profitable. But he doesn't know that his show was profitable. Don't enjoy the same luxuries that we do of being independent. Yeah. Oh my fucking god, me. It's the we for me. It's the we. I I oh my mm -hmm. god. Like uh it's it's it's, it's fascinating because these are the people who will like 
you know, get so upset and so incensed when you try to talk about like white privilege or entitlement. These are the people that are paying other people out to like want to be like a welfare state or something because they want like livable wages and shit. But they say this shit like it's like relatable, like we, we, like, come on, come on. You have to know when you have any, you, you know what I mean? Like, you have to Shameless. have to on what kind of yeah, problems you have, have, right? Like, mm -hmm. be, be, be reasonable with yourself, sir. Like, what? What? And he yeah. does kind of know because in his initial video, he never disclosed how much the contract was for. It wasn't until or Daily Wire was came out with their response that they mentioned the 50 million. He never mentioned the 50 million. So he has some awareness of how of how much money that is and how if he mentioned that, a little bit of the sympathy would, would have, you know, gone away. Mm -hmm. But <laughs> he responded though again after yeah, they today. released their response and yeah, then uh, Ben Shapiro also said it's 50 million dollars um he came out saying it was never about the money okay it wasn't about the money like he's trying to make it seem as if like he's them too. yeah he recorded them and he played yeah, it on a talk boy. Them. yeah my, my, my favorite <laughs> tidbit from this whole thing is that apparently according to will summer of daily beast apparently um when uh steven crowder initially released his video without mentioning the company that offered him the money and how much money he was offered Jordan Peterson tweeted out support for <laughs> yeah. for for Steven Crowder. And then yeah, once Jordan back. Peterson found out that the company that he was uh, <laughs> that Steven Crowder was knocking is the company <laughs> that he works for in Daily Wire, <laughs> Ben Shapiro's company. So then he went and deleted his support for <laughs> Steven Crowder. <laughs> so good. Oh, and Candace Owens called him a bitch too. Yeah. Yeah. Do we have that you wanna, mic? I have it. Yeah, if you wanna, if you wanna it, watch it, that too, I think it's it's, for you it's more very juicy. Me. Juicy. Also, <laughs> uh, Matt Walsh commented as well. He didn't mention Stephen Crowder by name, but it's obvious who he's talking about. What a coward! Yeah. Nothing happened here other than nobody wanted to pay Stephen Crowder one hundred and twenty million dollars. So he turned to his viewers, who he thinks are stupid. Stupid up to how this negotiation work, right? Like this is like normal. You kick it back and forth, and they were gonna make up for his loss. So people that are upset by his video, the also million not what it was, but watch it, <laughs> are now going to give him a dollar, whatever it, it costs to be in the mug club, and they're gonna become the hundred and twenty million dollars that he feels that he deserves. First of all, I was gonna say this unrelatable, unrelatable. People are trying to pay for bacon and eggs right now at the grocery store, trying to buy a steak. <laughs> We're over here crying because somebody couldn't meet you at $120 million. And it is crying. I don't like it. It was a total bitch move. There are plenty of things that happen across all organizations in the conservative movement where I will say that I empathize and with Steven Crowder and saying that sometimes you feel like a cynic, which is like, is everybody selling out? Are people doing this? People doing that? There are a lot of things that Daily Wire has done that I disagree with. There's a lot of things that Turning Point has done that I disagree with. Uh, there are things perhaps that PragerU has done that I disagree with. I have worked with all of these companies, right? But to do a total bitch move and go out to the public <laughs> rather than trying to resolve these things and these, and these slight differences behind the scenes and to make it seem like you're the hero and you're the true one and you keep it authentic when something, really nothing happened other than you didn't like an initial term sheet and all you had to do was tell them that and tell them what you didn't like and go back and forth with lawyers like everybody else. I think it's crappy. I think it's. I, I think Stephen is a, a little egocentric. He probably will do better on his own. I don't think he knows how to plan a team. And by the way, the last thing I'm going to say, because I'm going on Tim Pool's tonight, so I'm going to say it anyways later, is that I'm pretty sure, wasn't it Stephen Crowder who also screwed over somebody he used to work with? Was it not Gay Jared? Because he had him tied up in a contract. Wasn't that not Stephen Crowder who did that? Jared? So is he supposed to be so the moral change. high bar? Or not supposed to call him out for that? Here, here's the thing. <laughs> Stephen, why don't you release not gay Jared from his NDA and allow Damn. him to talk about how he felt he was treated by you? Because I know that at the Blaze, everyone says that you're actually oh, not that fight. nice. You treat people let poorly, but you bring Thank in so much revenue that everybody just has to take it. So I don't like it. It stinks to high heaven. And I'm calling you out on that because I think it, it was crappy that you threw mud on me. Did it the first time via a tweet a long time That's ago. Did not do it a second time. Pause, Total pause, 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 yeah. pause, pause, right there. Come on, pause. It's not about pause. That's all it's really about. No, because this is the pot calling the kettle unrelatable, hypocritical grifter. That's all this is. Like mm -hmm. that's all that's about. You don't like him person. He said some shit to you. Because bitch, you was doing this same shit months ago on behalf of Kanye. She came out there like, oh, poor Kanye. His friend won't give him what he wants. He needs to go shut the fuck up. Do the same shit. The
Like, give me a break out here in this goofy looking funeral gown. She make me sick talking. To her. Like, that's what I don't like. like. I just want to just have your pride. Just I keep it G real. Like, just say you don't like him. Just say you don't like him. You don't like him. But mm-hmm. this, like, you need to offer up this rationale condemning him that is easily applicable to you. Just lets me know, like, you just out loud playing in our face. Like, I can't mm-hmm. stand it. The way, like, for you to be being like, oh, he thinks his audience is stupid, and so do you. Your yep. whole business, all of you think the right is stupid. And everybody that watches you validates that bullshit. Oh my God. I listen to that talk. I'm like, oh. uh, I'm not yeah. sure what else there is to add to that that discussion. I mean, that's I yeah, guess really, I can... it sounds like Crowder's not gonna take the, the contract. Like he's he his his new video sounds like he's pretty definite on that. So the, he's the a bridge has been burnt, but I don't know if you noticed in his video. He um he basically is doing all of this, in my opinion, to start a new grift. Yeah. Like he's saying, like, well, if all of yeah. you want to find his own empire, no question. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So he could start yeah. his own Daily Wire. Also, can can we can I have a a, a hot take that I I don't know is a little unpopular, but how much do people like us who run our mouths for a living want to run our mouths? Like it's always like when you think about it. You have your own platform. You have a million different channels in which you talk. What fucking message do you think you have? What is this deep, dark thing that you need to impart on the world that you have no channel which you could say it why you need every channel to give you untethered fucking freedom and access like why is there no ability to accept that like different rooms is different stuff like i recognize i can't go on the hill cussing and carrying on the way i want to do in my video and stuff like that like it's not you know what i mean like no one has to tell me that we don't have to have a fight about that like i recognize some people their contracts and agreements like you understand that i'm very sick it's it's, it's so like it tells me that we're out of touch, these silly ass conversations all the mm-hmm. time. Like average person goes through life, not even really, no one gives a F what they think. They don't get to express themselves. They don't even get to hit yeah, them out. We run our mouths. A whole thousands of people know what we think on any given issue. We run our mouths so much that people can guess what we think about an issue before we say it. And it's mm-hmm. just like, oh my God, 50 million, but they have terms. Exactly. He does battle to say it. If he wants that freedom, he doesn't that don't take the 50 million. Like that's like the, to go on to go on and complain about it. I, that goes to your point, Mike. This is a new grip. This is a way to get people into his, into his mug club and give him money. It's all it's all just try. And th- this comparison I made as well with uh, in my video. Look at our sets. All of us. Do we have like multi million dollars like sets like crews behind this? No, we don't have these billionaire back. We don't have all this unlimited cash coming into us. These mm-hmm. people on the right, it's clear what they are fighting for because of the people that give them money. What? Why else do they have that money? Why else are billionaires f- feeding Crowder for years and years and years without any strings attached? Why would they do that? Because he's there in their economic interests. Meanwhile, mm-hmm. here I am with the fucking green screen, Mike with some panels, like Matt with a white. <laughs> hey, <laughs> my wall. This is my wall. Oh, hey, you have a nice room. <laughs> it's a little different. <laughs> but like, we don't have sets and shit. We don't have money, right? Like, it's 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 a much, it's a whole different thing here. And it, it just the point being, you know what we're about, right? Like, we we are not fighting for billionaires. That's I think that's very clear from our commentary. But also, you can tell based yourself. on what we have. <laughs> it just reeks of. I just like it's like a privilege that I find like kind of sickening because I guess maybe it's something about um, having like a, being a public defender or something, and you know what poverty and stuff look like, and yada yada yada. I just have it in my mind, like even my own self. Like you know, a few years ago, three years ago, I consider myself firmly the broke. And now. You know, I'm financially comfortable. Like, you know, I I I I do all right. I pay my rent. I love my own apartment, and I feel like very blessed and aware of like the privilege and that. And I am not somebody that collects like I'm an immigrant, so I have a work visa that stops me from getting paid in all of the ways and whatever it is. So I I only get one thirty second of what is financially I could and would bring in, and I feel still very much so like by reason of looking at the world around me, like you're doing well. My problems mm-hmm. are not, you know what I'm saying? Like, 
And so when I see these people that are literally like millions and millions and millions and millions and millions of dollars trying to position themselves as the everyday man in order to center themselves and their bullshit fucking individual problems, people, I'm like, could you give me a fucking break? But then when they're actually, you know, we're talking about issues and things that affect people and people that are really struggling and stuff, all of a sudden they got a fucking problem with any level of compassion or something. But I'm supposed to hear you talk about 50 million. I don't give a fuck what the terms of a $50 million contract is. Are you crazy? <laughs> There's literally nothing I could ever do in my life that's going to have me talking about a $50 million contract. What are you talking about? If somebody yeah. wanted to give me $50,000 right now, I'd be like, right. <laughs> seriously. Yeah. Like, yeah. I could do a little something for that. Like, yeah. $50 million and you're like, a slave, a slave contract. You invoke slavery for $50 million. He also, okay, I want to add one thing. He made fun of Colin Kaepernick for apparently turning down millions for a principled stance. So uh, that's that's one thing he's already done. Uh, and then a second thing, he said he has comparable offers. He's he's like, uh, this was one of many offers that I've gotten around the same price range. So other people have been shooting him 40 to $50 million four-year contracts as well. And like, he keeps saying this is about big tech. It has nothing to do with big tech. All it says mm -hmm. is that, again, like if any of these big tech companies decide to demonetize you, we want to recoup our losses. You're an investment. We want an ROI. We want to return on our investment if things fuck up. And again, you have to be a complete like child who's never dealt with the real world to think this is unusual for that much money. You know, and the reason like, that's like, in there is because they clearly are giving him full editorial control of his show. Like, mm -hmm. you, you oh, yeah, can't, you course. can't you can't you can't ask for both. You either yeah. get yep. the full blown editorial <clears throat> control and then take the hit when you get, you know, there's consequences for what you produce or you let Daily Wire oversee it to make sure that you don't get hit. Uh, and there are no consequences to what you produce. I mean, you really can't have it both ways, but that's what Crowder wants, obviously. It's it's just unreal. They just do so much whining. Like it's like there are always going to be some regulations. Like it exists somewhere. There's no like un just totally truly internet platform unregulated space. It's whether or not you run into it, you know, um, in your content. And like for me, like anytime I go on TikTok, anytime I try to go on TikTok and upload a video, the minute the minute I do it, TikTok be like, oh, this is violated guidelines. Yep. You know oh yeah. And I'd be like, ah, fuck this app. And then I go back. I gave up too. I go back to no, no campaign. I know no marching. <laughs> like, 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 this is, right? Like, no we could be cashing in. <laughs> yeah, I like. Cover I covered this week how uh, Hassan put out a, a pro Black Lives Matter video on MLK Day, and TikTok perma banned him and his yeah. editor. Yeah. And it yeah. wasn't until there was a news story about it that they <laughs> reinstated his account because it was so blatantly racist. There's like. Nothing. That's how that no, that's exactly how TikTok gives it up about my content. And you know what I say? I've been black every second of my life. So like I anticipate this. Like I don't know what I don't know what I don't know what fully free space. So I just be like, oh, okay, damn. You know, Twitter lets me get my shit off. So let me go back there. You know? <laughs> like, I just, the, the way these people just is like, oh my God, like any level of anything, like you have rules, like things come into play. Like I saw, I was looking at the YouTube comments on um yours on Rational National um david and i decided i like your audience i was like okay i like these people that are both <laughs> i yes i you know i already love they're mostly, they're mostly good <laughs> yes they mostly said wonderful things about me except mudslinger 88 um i, wanted, <laughs> <laughs> I, so I just wanted well, you to know away the name <laughs> i don't know if he's watching right now i just want you to know i fucking see you mudslinger <laughs> talking about i was like oh word <laughs> Imagine I, if he's it, baked right now watching this. Listen, oh <laughs> I, 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 I want to remember the name of the person who replied to them, but I looked. I was like, I was like, look at the haters. Look at the fucking haters. They were like, they were like, they were like, what did he say? He was like, he was like, oh, they, he said, uh, Olay. He's like, Olay, Olay adds nothing. She's not a good fit. She's she's just too loud and obnoxious and something. something. And I was like, oh, that damn. is you are somebody who lacks taste. You are a hater of, 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 the, of the highest form. <laughs> like, that is what they call a bad take, an unpopular opinion. And I just want you to know, it is not lost to me. You pick only my black ass out of this lineup. And, oh, and somebody else responded, and they were like, they were like, she has too big of a persona. It becomes a one woman show. And I say to that, <laughs> tell everybody else to get their fucking weight up. I've been waiting. I've been I've been waiting to put Mud Slinger. Like I've been, I was like, 
I'm <laughs> <laughs> I see you, boy. <laughs> but, but the comments were amazing. very, very positive. And I noticed somebody was like, oh, ladies, going to get them demonetized, um, cursing. And so I don't know the YouTube rules. So someone, thank you for telling me. I was like, let me try and make sure I don't mess up David's money. I'm going to try to curse less. <laughs> um, it, actually, it's, it's actually, it's it's the Twitch rules, not the YouTube ones. YouTube's actually pretty, they allow a lot of horrible hate speech. It's Twitch. The, it, they have it, YouTube weird is rules. so like, back and forth, though. Like, yeah. Well, I mean, so... YouTube allows hate speech on right wing channels. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. If I oh. talk about the hate speech and expose the hate speech, I get demonetized. Like it's so it's oh. all fucked up how that shit works. But I actually turned off monetization on the on this video. So there's like there's just super chats. But I don't want to have to deal with. I feel like every time a video gets demonetized on YouTube, it impacts every other video of mine. So I'm just like I'm just going to demonetize these podcasts. We can enjoy mm -hmm. ourselves, not have to, any restrictions really. Um, yeah, and for, the you know, privilege to make that to make so much on YouTube that you can tell when something is affecting it. <laughs> oh, I know. You can tell based on views. Really, honestly, yeah. I don't notice any difference in any views, videos. Like... I make the amount I make because of super chats mainly. So I have no idea monetization wise for ads. I don't even views though. Like if you get a video demonetized, the views on the next few videos, every single time it's happened to me, they, they're all yep. much lower than, than what a typical video gets. It, it's yeah, it's it a, takes it's your whole YouTube. channel for like a yeah. week. It's wow. horrible. Yeah. I don't have a YouTube channel yet, so I don't, I don't know the ins and outs. I'm going to come to y'all in due time. When's that so. coming? Give Sometime in the next this year. This year I'm working this on it. Year? I'm working on it. It's gonna come. It's gonna come this year. This year. I'm y'all see I'm moving away. I'm I'm moving towards it. All right. Like, you know, I feel like YouTube Listen is the Mike. most fair, but it's absolutely not perfect. Like comparing YouTube to TikTok or Twitch, um, YouTube is the best for creators. But the problem is there's zero communication, no transparency. They just kind of like create these changes, don't tell anyone, and we we just it, it, like we're trying to learn as we go and we've been doing this for years and years and years so it, it's still better than the alternatives but it is frustrating um but still like I, going back to this conversation about steven crowder and privilege it's like i used to work in retail and fast food as long as i can pay the bills like i i talk for a living like i could never imagine telling my audience how difficult my job is i literally talk that's it and so, like, these motherfuckers, they do less than us because they don't have to do research. They literally just make things up. Whereas yes. we, at least, even though we still talk, we we read. We do research. But Correct. they don't. So their job is, they talk for a living, and their job is easier than ours. And they're still complaining. And they think that their yeah, audience would sympathize with them. <laughs> It's yeah, it, to this, like we, all of us, I'm assuming all of you get paid based on like people supporting each one of you individually, right? Patreon, some ad revenue from the videos and that kind of stuff. But you all don't have like the Coke brothers backing you. Right? <laughs> you <don't have laughs> big oil, big tech, or uh, anyone got a Soros check yet? Because I'm told I'm supposed to get one. I don't, I don't see it. But I would have a sweet ass set if that was the case, and, and an actual crew, and a researcher, and an editor, and yeah. a person that makes thumbnails. Oh. I do all that shit myself. <laughs> so. David, mm -hmm. ever, ever since you said that, like none of us have fancy backgrounds, but you're in a green screen. I put you in Scrooge McDuck's vault using your <laughs> so my stream. You're, you're in Scrooge McDuck's vault. You've been, you have been I should change that. I should change that to my background. That's pretty sweet. Speaking of uh, new backgrounds, I actually have a new background, a brand new set coming on Monday, funded by George Soros. Um, it's going to be really, really cool that. looking. My main, wow, my main set. Yeah, no, uh, of yeah. course. I have to actually lay it out. Like, I'm being sarcastic. It's not funded by George Soros. The total cost was like $350. It's going to look absolutely fucking incredible. So, look out for that on Monday. Whoa. Mm. Expender. Yeah. 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 <laughs> We're getting rid of the wallpaper brick, folks. So, I'm really excited oh, about that. Oh, shit. It's gonna be it's Damn. gonna be pretty uh pretty nice. I have your old set and I'll just take that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Replace my you, you know what I'm so thankful for? So if if you remember, like you can kind of see my sets behind me. I have a bunch of foam pads on the walls, and my cat will fuck with me and she will just pull them off. Like she just grabs them, yanks them off, or she'll like rubber but like they're higher so she can't really reach them but she like rubs her body on it so she gets cat hair on it and so i have to go through with the lint roller that's gonna be gone we're getting rid of that shit um like i'll have it on the ceiling and stuff just for sound uh improvement sound but amazing. um that'll be gone so yeah yeah big spender here 350 dollars set really nice. excited that's very dope yeah yeah good for you so also this week uh george santos aka anthony aka katara 
<laughs> what are our thoughts on all the new lies from George? The, so I did a video on George Santos' new lies, and there were so many that I actually forgot to include one that had come out that day because <laughs> I just it had escaped my <laughs> yeah. mind. He he also pretended that so, so the, the one I forgot in my video was that he pretended to be or he claimed on a radio show. This is from last year that he was an art curator, and the Met Gala no longer let him in because he became too or because they became too woke. So he couldn't. Yep. He could no longer be in the Met Gala. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I somehow forgot to include. That's a hilarious lie. <laughs> like, that's in addition to his mom dying in, on nine eleven in the twin towers. That's in addition to him stealing three thousand dollars from a, from a vet with a, a dog with cancer. It sounds like a joke, but that like that happened. And then, in I addition know, that, to him, the also, I can't find being a, a drag it's queen. It's upsetting to me because like this is like it's clear that like nobody was paying fucking attention like there's no way like oh, if yeah. you had heard this like oh, there's yeah. no, you cannot there's no one person that heard all of these like if you mm -hmm. had been presented all of this information not as a lot just about any one person you would fucking know there's no, <laughs> yeah. there's no way there's no one person that knew it all no one was paying attention this motherfucker was just lying in the wind like he's just like <laughs> <laughs> just saying, just, <laughs> Yo, like, but just everyone lies on their resume. They all embellish on their resume. That's that's the defense. We all embellish on our resume. No, bro. <laughs> Your mom died insane. in nine eleven, but didn't. So, like, yeah. come on. He's <laughs> survivors of the, the, the Holocaust. He wasn't even Ukrainian in. Holocaust he's survivors. A, he's, a literal, he's a literal. He's a literal. His whole thing was like, my mom died, uh, and and on nine eleven, and then it was. No, she, was she died towers. later, but she was yeah. working in the towers, and <laughs> which then, wasn't even now, true, right? No, and now it's, country. and now she was, yeah, she wasn't even in the country to 2003. Yeah, uh, yeah, right. so, incredible. Yeah, yeah, it's absolutely. I mean, incredible. I but the this, dog one I kind of ruins earlier, the magic for me. I said this earlier on the majority report. Do do we do we know for sure that his mom is even dead? I mean, is she going to show <laughs> up? Of course we don't. No, of course not. We, we don't know anything. No, yeah, she's and, she's dead because he asked for money for her funeral. That's how that's how they know. He actually well, that's the we... report. Mm. Well, she died. I, well, <laughs> I need a death certificate, and I need it from not from him. I need it from the official. Need <laughs> 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 from Brazil. <laughs> Let me ask y'all something. Y'all ever know somebody in real life that's like. Like this, like they tell you information that you just like just can't be a real fucking person. Like I used to have a yeah, thing I, when I was young, like people who would like not make sense to me, I would literally think they're a figment of my imagination. Like I had real friends that like they'd say shit to me. I'm like, this bitch doesn't exist. She's just here with me because <laughs> this ain't. This is not. I, I'm telling you, I had a friend that like I'm telling you this. Like I remember this shit like it was yesterday. I had a good friend and like grade from like grade seven and nine that like she, I know her to be poor but yet she always had the newest richest shit like all the things she would say to me or like oh we have that am I, we have that in my house and i just thought she used to be making shit up like i don't know what this, what this girl talking you know and i would just dismiss a figment of my imagination then i remember it came out like her daddy was like a big fucking kingpin doing all kinds of, i was like it all makes sense holy she shit exists. i was like she exists this shit okay i knew something wasn't adding up i knew the math wasn't mathing like this isn't is it like who is the person that just like you're like how is this what are you telling me i don't ooh, ooh, you gotta have a person like that you've met yeah i i think we all know so at least someone uh, oh yeah at varying degrees of uh, you're not as right. bad but yeah, yeah no, sure. bad. Oh, right but this is a whole new no this sandals, is like no, nobody's as bad as sandals sandals doesn't that's what i'm saying to us that's what i'm trying to express to the room is that he's a figment of our collective imagination like, okay <laughs> that's what i'm that's what i'm trying to get off <laughs> I, I'm I dying to show you all the response to the drag queen allegations because somebody had like the best response I've ever seen. So uh, let me let me share this really quick because this. And by the way, it, it's life. the only thing he's actually tried to deny. Like everything, he's everything else is just like that's he's ignoring true, it. Actually, I and then and that. it's because yeah, the right wing totally doesn't true. like this. That's no, why this is the one the right wing doesn't tolerate. Yeah, yeah. so they he may have an elected official who's a drag queen. That's a real thing you can say out loud. So he says. The most recent obsession from the media claiming that I am a drag queen or performed as a drag queen is categorically false. Remember those words. Uh, the media continues to make outrageous claims about my life while I am working to deliver results. I will not be distracted nor fazed by this. Look at this response. Like, girl. Yeah, this is the best. Yeah, this one. This one show showcases it perfectly. I mean, it's the same fucking smile. 
Like, how are you? How are you gonna deny this? <laughs> wait, wait, that's not Come a Photoshop on. Wait, go back. That's not a Photoshop picture. Wait, no, wait, wait, wait. What? Oh, no, the first one is that you can match their teeth. It's they're, they're on top of each other. Wait, yeah, let me see. Go back. Go back. Let me see. Okay, let me let me pull it up. Computer you, enhance enhance. You, I thought you can match the cool. teeth on both of them, and you could tell it's the same teeth. It's yeah, yeah. Oh, sorry. So yeah, one person like overlays his face on on Katara, yeah. who he is as a drag queen. Yep. And then go to the next screen. Oh, I know he's fucking lying. Oh yeah. Yep. And, then look, and then the next, like, it's a perfect angle too, because it's like this is how his face. Him. Like, <laughs> come on. Him, like, bro. Yeah, and, and, and for my thumbnail, clear, nothing is wrong with this. Like, no, no, the right. drag queen is, no, that isn't the issue. The, the issue is that he's in the Republican Party that right now are calling drag queens groomers, and that these are grooming yes. events. Like this, yes. this is why he came out to denounce. This is the only lie he's trying, or the only uh, thing of his claim of his that he's denounced. He's an he's a that mess he denounces actor. that, but he doesn't denounce the dog shit. The dog shit is the one that ruined it. He did he's denounce that anymore. too. He's, yeah. Oh, he did he? Okay. Yeah, he did. Like, he did deny that like, after the drag shit. queen, of what, course. What, what, what dog shit? What dog shit? Okay, what so I remember all of Yemi last week. I was uh, maybe the week before. I was telling you, I was like, I love him. Uh, he's he's like Santa Claus. If we believe in him, he'll continue to be real on all the shit. Because back then, it was funny. It was just like, how did someone climb the ranks and become this superpower? Uh, well, not superpower, but rise to the level that he is, New York's third congressional district elected official and have all these skeletons in his closet one of those skeletons is that uh somewhat he like there was a dying dog who needed an operation someone did a gofundme he took all the cash ran and the dog died yeah he, just, he took all the fucking dying dog cash and, and let the it was dog a, die it, it was the dog it. of a homeless veteran and it was their service yeah. dog too yeah. Yeah. yeah like what the fuck <laughs> It's it, so it's bad. it's almost like if you put that in a TV show, it would seem unrealistic. Like just the it's, no, no one would. It's too, it's too perfect. A a homeless vet's dog with cancer. That's it's the money American. that he stole. Is an elected like, Republican. It's insane. It's very yeah. American Psycho with old boy. Like you remember that movie, oh, like yeah. complete like batshit craziness. Like mm -hmm. he's an actor. He's clear. I mean, child. Oh, yeah. I don't. I don't. He's. A, I don't know. I can't. I can't make sense of it. Like living no, your life like that. Hard I can't man to I can't put my but my shoes on. I, I I so hate. I can't imagine a life just full of crazy lies. It's not even like reasonable lies. You did every oh, lie man. is some nut shit. Why, bro? Yeah. What's going on? You, what like, you, you gotta to? keep track of that stuff. How do you keep tabs on any? Of these I don't things? think he's not. He hasn't because it's, it's clearly all coming not, out. He clearly is not keeping he tabs. Just doesn't he care. Has, he is not keeping tabs on this. He just be saying yeah, shit. It's clear, like just saying true. shit. Like nobody true. paying he's, attention to him. Just tweeting in the wild, but real life. There's <laughs> like, also yeah, the, no, he's, there's he's a hilarious moment. Real life. His uh, his former roommate was on CNN with Anderson Cooper, and and his roommate's talking about how he stole once stole a, a a scarf from me, and I never saw the scarf. Like the, the scarf meant a lot to him. He was given to him by his friend on the anniversary of his like uh, his his dad's death. So he's like Santos stole stole the scarf. They show a photo of Santos at the Stop the Steal rally wearing the scarf. <laughs> he's at the Stop the Steal rally wearing a scarf that he stole from his roommate. <laughs> Like, <laughs> it's actually, when you think about it's it, it's just like crazy. a very funny, like, gag movie. Like, it's a very it's, funny movie. Like, no one would believe it. I can't no help but laugh. It's, just, it's, it's so outlandish. Far. It's so insane. <laughs> it's a film. Like, he's a method actor. I'm convinced. <laughs> like, convinced. He's preparing for a role. It's an <laughs> elaborate role. Yeah, yeah, an elaborate role. Oh, yeah. They're recording this. They're filming it. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> we're, we're being punked as a nation. <laughs> we'll see the documentary in like a year and a half. So this is how I got into Congress. Right. No, honestly, that'd be some wild shit. Wild yeah. Shit. It's like Tila Tequila in politics. Like, just what is given. Like, just any, <laughs> any, just throwing any wild shit into fucking wall. <laughs> Whatever. Let's see what sticks. Like, who cares? It doesn't got to make sense. It doesn't got to be cohesive. <laughs> like, <sighs> it, it, did you, so when I went away, did you all talk about the Baruch volleyball thing? Because that was also really funny. How the I think the head of the Nassau County Republican Party, like they all denounced him and they called on him to resign. Nassau. 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 Okay, Nassau. Thank you. I'm uh I'm just a few blocks outside George Santos's. Oh, name. are you? Okay, yeah, okay. Yeah, the, the Republican, th this dude is like, yeah, you know, and he was telling me that he went to Baruch College and he was a star volleyball player, and you know, he was boasting about his credentials there with the sport. Turns out he didn't even attend the school. And like the way that he told oh. the story was so funny. Yeah. Sorry, sorry. Well, that's not just me. Here we go. <laughs> so let's see if let's see if the audio works. Let me do a little clip first. The main thing that mm -hmm. really kind of 
Uh-huh. Good. All right. So this is the scarf thing I was talking about. This is his former. This is Santos's former roommate on CNN. This is just great. The main thing that really kind of irked me was when I went to visit him um, in his uh, flushing home in 2018. I came for a few days, and when I got back to Boston, I noticed uh, a Burberry shirt and a Burberry scarf were missing. And I mean, I you know I lose things all the time. I, I'm I'm terrible. But the uh, the Burberry scarf, I think the reason why it bothered me so much was because uh, my best friend Danielle had given it to me um, on the anniversary of my grandfather's passing, and it was more of a sentimental value and- than you know a materialistic value. I, I I understand he was actually wearing something he took from you at a pre-January 6th rally in Washington. <laughs> if, Is that yes, the scarf? You can believe this. He has the audacity, yes. <laughs> Wait a minute. As, uh, He's wearing the scarf. A stolen scarf to a stole, steal the election rally. <laughs> and the audacity, quite frankly. I mean, wow. I wish I had that much audacity. So when you saw him standing here at this podium, First of all, did you were you like, that's the scarf that I got on the, the that relates to, to my grandmother's death. I mean, that's got to be infuriating. Uh, there was a, uh, a few choice words that I won't share with you, um, but yes, <laughs> I was I was livid. First of all, oh George my god! Simpson. Hold on, now I have to. I'm sorry, I have to switch teams. Forget all of y'all. I'm I'm pro bono representing George Santos right quick. <laughs> <laughs> now that's a pimp. Now that's a pimp. First of all, he's wearing that scarf. Let's start there. Like, <laughs> like oh, all right, well, <laughs> not my Uber. He's trying to call me. Hold on a second. Buzz the door. Hold on. Buzz the door. <laughs> <laughs> all right, bye. Um, okay, back to what I was saying. First of all, you have to be a special kind of. Do you know how much you have to hate a motherfucker? What kind of pettiness this to like have been somebody's roommate back in the day, like back in college? See them like embroiled in political scandal, all these lies are coming. You you contact like, hey, 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 hold on, I got some, I got some. That motherfucker took my scarf, and I'm still mad about it. Like to be to be fair, this was the end of this interview. There was a lot more before it that wasn't hair, just about the scarf. Look at that. <laughs> But um, so his that, roommate that also talked about that would have been pretty his, great though if Anderson Cooper did introduce him as we have it just, with us right now, George <laughs> Santos's former roommate whose scarf was stolen from him by Santos. Let's oh my talk god! To him right now, That'd like that would have been amazing. <laughs> Wait, why is everyone leaving? <laughs> <laughs> He'll come back. Also, during the same interview, um, so his roommate talked about how also he... not to defend not to defend George Santos either, but uh, I mean this is definitely not defending him. But just to to move this conversation on another point, uh, very very bizarre to remember the scarf as the scarf given to me on my grandfather's anniversary of his death i'm sorry <laughs> it is a weird place it is a weird time to yeah. give somebody a gift uh, but i don't know i just figured they had some relationship some friendship that they understood that weird present i don't know <laughs> Stan was like no this was this scarf was given to me when my grandfather died actually on the anniversary of his death or something like that like, <laughs> like let's say it was his the story let's say it was grandpa's scarf i don't know i just think it's a it's a, it's a, point it's being though, so thing, but th- but that's point is Santos. I'm just throwing out a little aside, but point is Santos. His, Go ahead. His roommate also mentioned how he was close with with Santos's mom actually, and and Santos's mom just kind of brushed off the lies and was like, oh, you know, he just says things all the time. Like, so, let, or, no, it, his actual words were um, that his mom said, oh, it, him and his stories. Like, it's just kind of like so. His mom didn't really mm. even take her own son seriously. Just like, oh, you know, he him and his stories. Because, I mean, I guess from a mother's perspective, you just think, oh, what, you know, he, some, some lies, whatever. He just makes things up. No big deal. But over the course of a lifetime, <laughs> you add all this <laughs> shit up, including the lie about her. Like, it, it's just it's wild. It's just um, as an attorney, I just want to say that that is George Santos scarf. Um, he adverse possessed that. That was that <laughs> open. And like you, you went like that's his scarf. You see the scarf? He wearing the scarf, not hiding it from you. He's giving you notice. It's open. It's hostile. It's dirty. It's exclusive. That's his fucking scarf, bro. Like you are just talking shit. You see him in your scarf, and you ain't run up on him for your scarf. You clearly don't want it that bad. <laughs> so like, he was wearing the fuck out that scarf, sir. Also, that's nuts. Like. People take like 
you a punk. Like, people take clothes all the time. Like, you know how much clothes I take for my best friend? All my favorite articles of clothing. Like, I can't even be sure that this shirt isn't hers. Like, imagine she come to say something about me the minute I'm in trouble. Like, girl? Ooh, no. I saw shirt. her in the breakfast club. She stole my shirt. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. You're a hater. You're crazy. would hate you this way. <laughs> that thing on it. Yeah, that on its own, whatever. But it's just funny in addition to everything else. And the fact that he wore it at a Stop the Steal rally. <laughs> like, uh, yeah, it's just too perfect. That fit was fly. I'm on his side. I guess he's a. So I guess he's just like a pathological liar. Like you just be lying. Yeah, to, clearly. To, yeah, it's I lying about. So. He has to lie ten times a day, or else he explodes. Like he's like the the movie Speed, where the bus <laughs> has to stay over fifty miles an hour. And blows <laughs> up. Lie. He's got to keep lying. Like my, they, my Grammy and them, who coincidentally used to lie a lot. <laughs> We're talking about people who who lie, like people who lie so much. If they tell you the sky is blue, you got to go outside and check. <laughs> like like <laughs> that's how this man just be lying like not even like no motivation just shits and gigs ass lies like oh i can tell the truth but hmm, what's the fun in that <laughs> like <laughs> why you giving it up <laughs> absolutely yeah yeah i've known people who are like that where every story you can tell that they're embellishing and it's like okay that happened but never to this extent never to the point where you're like literally scamming people and stealing the money from their dying dog like that's just that takes it to a whole new level. Like I feel like this man and is being a, a public figure. Yeah, yeah. That's the wild it, part. You know? It's crazy to me. It genuinely is shocking. Like it's hard. It's hard to like dissect this story and not think that there's there's some glitch in the simulation. Like how the fuck is this person real? David, when you were doing research for your Santos video, did you see the video uh, like this old one where he was in like some TV debate and they asked this one guy like, what do you like to do when you relax? And so his opponent's like, oh, you know, I like to kick back at home, have a Hagen dazs sometimes wear my pajamas. That's a good night for me. And Santos gave virtually the exact same answer, just in a different order. He was like, well, I like to eat ice cream, usually Hagen dazs I like to be comfortable, so I'll wear pajamas. Are you and serious? I didn't see that. And he, he just, it's so weird. He just parodied his answer and everyone's just <laughs> going like, oh, well, that's a good day. Blah, blah. You find that, clip? that sounds too funny. Yeah, I want to see this. Uh, I'll pull it up. It was on Twitter somewhere. Santos ice cream. Oh yeah, haagen Maybe Santos might be enough to find it. <laughs> oh, here. I found I found it. Okay. Oh, my God. <laughs> nice. I got a new one. Let's see this. <laughs> one you haven't seen yet. There's just, there's so, there's, how can we keep track of them? There's just way. I know. There's too many. There's just way too many. All right. Yeah, this is it. <laughs> World. So, Mr. Zimmerman, name one of your favorite family traditions. Oh, my goodness. Absolutely. <laughs> New Year's Eve. I hope my, hope my nephews and I, my brother and sister-in-law, I get together in our sweats, watch a stupid holiday movie, some sort of stupid comical holiday movie, and eat the food that we shouldn't eat all year round. So that's a great thing. It begins with delicatessen. It goes into, it goes into haagen dazs It's always a staple, usually <laughs> popcorn as well. <laughs> Mr. Santos, your favorite family tradition? Um, our, our favorite family tradition is just family time. We've always been, you know, it, it doesn't matter if it's a Tuesday night or if it's a Sunday night or if it's Christmas. Every moment we can get together, that's uh, kind of a downtime. It's sweatpants, pints of haagen all over the place. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> All right, so here's a, so what the hell? <laughs> Shameless! God damn! No one is. Oh my god! What oh the my god! <laughs> the look on the guy's face after is like, are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> oh my god! He's not a real person. So he, look, he looks like how um. Johnny Depp looks in Charlie and the Chocolate Factory like the same way. Yeah, there's like there's something going. <laughs> yeah. I don't know, is he, is he worked out or something? Like some, yeah. something something going on there. Something weird is going on there. Yeah. This is a setup. I'm telling you, this is some kind of larger joke. <laughs> Do you guys remember that Kristen Wiig character on SNL? When she was the character, that woman, she played a character who always tried to one up. Like she would obviously be making something up and yeah, trying yeah. to one up <laughs> whoever she was on the screen with. Like someone would be like, "Oh, I just won the New York City Marathon," and she'd be like, "Oh, that's really great. That's really great. I just won the New York State Marathon." Uh, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> that sentence. <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah, I remember that. That's hilarious. Yeah. Oh my god. That's that's him. Yeah, I'm surprised he didn't go like. Absolutely. Like, yeah, comical movies, yeah, that too. Yeah, the ro romantic comical for me. That's, you know, romantic, <laughs> comical, comical. I can't believe that gets comical, first of all. But... <laughs>
<laughs> wow. That's him, yeah. So that's so funny. I, I, I mentioned on, on my in my video that I think and I got some pushback on this, but I think I, I am right to say this. Santos is a worse liar than Trump in the sense that his lies are more outrageous. Trump lies for ego. Trump's lies are more impactful on society, do more damage to you know the country, the world. But in terms of just the actual lies themselves, Donald Trump didn't say his parents or his mom died in 9-11. Like there's there's like yeah. there's even limited not again, this is not a defense of Trump. We're just like looking for the, the biggest liar of all time here. I I can't think of anyone that tops Santos. Like Santos is if that's even Alex his name, Jones his name is actually Anthony or whatever. Jones. But you know. Yeah, hard to agree just, on that. Yeah, uh, the Santos is worse than Trump. Comes close. Trump at least had like he Trump he Bellish. has a minimal amount of self awareness. Santos has none, and that's not to say that Trump has a lot, but like a minimal amount to where you kind of like lower the level of the lies so they're not as outrageous, even though sometimes they do cross that line. But like, I mean, Trump even sprinkles in some truth or like will base the lie on a kernel of truth or something. Santos just like fabricates this out of thin air. Like, there's a real difference there. Yeah. Like the art curator at the I, Met Gala and like all this shit. Like just like what? Like mom and nine eleven. Like just the most out stupidest shit. I, I really no can't wait to see how he tries to lie himself into trying to stand by these lies that have already been outed. Like, mm -hmm. like he just how he claims he doesn't say, know the homeless vet. Like, how he'll dare just, you say like my that. mom didn't die in the twin towers on 9 11 of course she did and you know how i know that's right my father is osama bin laden i mean i'm waiting for him. <laughs> <laughs> he loves having us and sweatpants <laughs> Like, I'm waiting for him to completely just continue. Like, that's actually low bar there. Like, oh, I don't know that guy. We'll see what he comes up with when eventually people start, you know, he's going to find, they're going to find like the tech vet who uh, apparently forwarded this uh, veteran to Santos's quote unquote charity organization for animals. They're going to find all these people who are going to back up the story and then he's going to have to go from oh i don't know that guy to twisting and slithering his way into trying to convince everyone that oh i forgot i did know him but insert insane story here yeah uh, it's just comedy for us though but for the republicans they gotta actually wonder where is this all going like you know how a whole bunch of republicans already came out and like you need to step the fuck down like this this has just gone way yeah too but far, they were okay? state like, republicans <laughs> in new york when it comes to the house yeah. they they want those That's numbers true. they don't give a shit they, they <laughs> they're gonna stand by santos for the next two years i can't imagine santos awesome. winning re-election but like for the next two years they're, they're gonna they want those numbers they're gonna try and keep them as, as long as they can no they won't elect a drag queen twice in a row i can't see the republicans right oh now. no <laughs> no no that's when they draw the line. Like you could lie about your mom dying, you could scam veterans who are homeless who need yeah. surgery for their dogs. But if you put on that drag costume, mm -hmm. that's when you become a groomer, excommunicated. So that's where that's where he really does have to deny the allegation, even though mm -hmm. he's fucking just caught dead to rights. Like you can't unless get you're Rudy that. Giuliani, because Rudy Giuliani actually got a motorboat from Donald Trump. So Rudy, right? Can't forget How Rudy. Rudy pass? is the exception. Yeah. Well, because he, he gonna... put out, you know, to the president. So that's I think <laughs> I, I, that's probably why. I, 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 okay. I don't think it matters. I think he's going to have a very hard time getting reelected because, um, you know, the district he represents isn't isn't really a red district. Um, mm. It was uh, held by Democrats previously. In fact, George Santos won in 2022 by less than he lost by in 2020. Um, oh, wow. Mm. Yeah. So it was just a, it was a turnout issue, honestly. Um, and uh, the the person, the I forgot his name. I think it's Swazi, the Democrat who uh, previously held that seat. He wasn't r running again. So it was mm. a new Democrat versus a Republican who uh, challenger. So, you know, everything was sort of uh, in, a, in a midterm election. So everything was sort of turned around. Also, a, a big chunk of this district is in Long Island. And I don't mm. think that 9-11 stuff is going to play in mm. Uh, mm. Long Island, where yeah. famously mm -hmm. all the firefighters and cops who uh, work in Manhattan live. Uh, yeah. So <laughs> I don't think that's going to play. True. Yeah. <laughs> I love 
I love Olay's return. Like she comes back and you see poof Smoke all the is- stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you're doing that though, because I think I think Facebook would take me off. Facebook would take me off forever if, if you did that on the street. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That was iconic. I love it. <laughs> I saw the look on your face, dude. I was like <laughs> It's like nothing went on here. <laughs> Completely innocent. I thought I turned it on when I was done. <laughs> hey, someone, someone in your chat, uh, David, said uh, Gary says Binder has to take the seat. Should should I run against George Santos? I'm just blocks out of his district. Wait, are you? Should are you I, yeah. Should what? I, should Binder I run does. against George Santos? Are, are you announcing? You live in New York. I'm in New York, yeah. I'm in Queens. I'm I'm a I'm a Queens lifer, born, oh. raised, lived all my entire life. Never I mean, left Queens in your life. Never left Queens in my life. Well, actually, I really. <laughs> is awesome. If you like, if you like, actually, like, throw out the percentages, I probably have not left Queens like probably like ninety percent of my life. <laughs> I hate wow. Queens with all my heart. <laughs> I hate yeah, it's uh, I like so. Yeah. Sh- should I announce officially? Should I run again? Wait, 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 hang on, Matt. <laughs> I think that you should amazing. run so you really have a chance. Run in the people's party, please. Yes. Oh, oh right, yes. right. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. I need their backing. Yes. And I should run. <laughs> and my, my campaign strategy should be run promising to work together with George Santos somehow. Yeah. <laughs> and the Boogaloo I Boys. The aisle. Yes. <laughs> and for some reason, you're really angry at Bernie Sanders the entire time you're running. <laughs> Which they're, they're, come on, dude. They've now turned on Bernie. <laughs> Ladies that and gentlemen, is, I'm proud hilarious. to announce that I am officially running and I am being backed by the LaRouche Pack. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Who was that that ran again that was back that they were backed by LaRouche? Someone's been in the news lately. I can't remember. Who. Uh, the one who just tried to, I think, assassinate four Democrats. He paid yes. for the assassination of oh. yeah. Oh. Okay, yeah. Uh, I recall. Yeah. Which is, the guy which who's is been wild. in the news lately. Oh, the one who tried but to kill Democrats. Think, right. Yeah. Yeah. You think this would be a bigger story? Could you imagine if there was a story about how there was like a handful of Antifa assassins that have been hired by a one time Democratic hopeful candidate and it's part of this massive conspiracy to assassinate a bunch of like that? That would be fucking national news if it was in the other direction but this whole thing went down people barely know about it it was like a footnote in, in the last week and that, that's a pretty big story you know what are we talking about speaking of the story not being big clearly it ain't because i ain't heard about it <laughs> yeah you should break it down because you, huh? you didn't hear about it either like, no and you're all news people okay so there is an american pub, uh, politician a republican who ran i forget if it was for uh, it was like a lower tier position he wasn't actually but he didn't win his election and he called himself the maga king his social media is plastered with maga everything anyways it was just revealed last week that he was part of a conspiracy he hired four people to assassinate democrats to, to assassinate different democratic politicians and he was going to potentially participate himself like and and again it's one of those things where if it was in the other direction if there was the antifa super soldiers who were being activated by some you know progressive or something you would hear about it non-stop but like i guess maybe just right-wing extremist violence is so normal now or, or casual yeah i'm gonna release yeah. my part of the internet i'm guessing it's in new mexico oh my yeah god. This it is new mexico, oh my right? god yeah. how did you guess that the our, the commenter our here the chat. The, uh, Stephen k there you go yeah oh, I thought, like, just figures oh uh, just like i, I yeah. guess the state oh uh, okay <laughs> Yeah, he he said he ran for Congress and that the election was stolen. And he put out some really cryptic and ominous tweet, uh, I, I think, like in November or December, saying, I'm weighing my options right now. Um, and I he guess that, that this is what he can the vote or something like that. So to give you an I idea. Wish, just I wish people would be for fucking real, bro. To <laughs> like be for fucking real. Like what? How you, the whole lose either election rig things. Oh, bring back shame. He, he I took part. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> He took part they in have no shame. himself uh, as well, by the way. Uh, the criminal complaint against Pena includes chilling details. In one case, bullets tore through the walls of a 10-year-old girl's bedroom as she slept. Just before that attack, police alleged Pena had urged the gunman to aim lower when they shot at the politician's houses. Charges oh, against no, he Pena really was... Oh, oh, he was. Part, no, like he's a, he, he's he's I a true believer. Was a he was, he was part no, of this is a he. He is made. He no. He was. He was. He was doing this shit. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, oh yeah, he went through he with it. He was doing drive-bys on on Democrats. Mm-hmm. I want you yeah. to drive-bys. That's what happened. That's the right messaging. Whoever, someone should put me in charge of propaganda. It should have been called drive-bys. 
on Democrats. That's how I'm, and that's how I'm gonna tell it to Twitter when we tomorrow. That's crazy. That's really fucking wild. Like, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Shooting up the place, powerful. And how they figure out it was him? They see him. Did he have on a? Did he have on a push What do you? <laughs> <laughs> Fucking sorry. That's the worst shit I ever envisioned. Please imagine this white man coming out the top of the car, real boy, hood style, Boucher. Well, okay, wait. To be fair, I don't think he's white. It's Solomon Pena. I, I, I believe but he's it, Latin, if, I, if I'm not wrong. But um, but either way, that is really I, I, funny. I would, I would really funny you a image. Joke about black people's inability to dissect whiteness, but I will get you up on the right. <laughs> like, 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 okay, so. He got he got twenty six percent of the vote last November. Yeah, and he got caught because he participated in the drive by and the assassination attempt. So he's been arrested along with the other people that he was hiring to, he to do this. No, no one died. Fortunately, that's why. No, no and that's why. Hurt. And that's why he didn't win this election because he don't know how to execute. You can't even fold through. You are you done. Jesus. <laughs> I landed. I don't care what y'all say. Hey, David, you still up on Facebook? <laughs> yeah, I gotta check that Facebook account. <laughs> I, I do want to know. I do want to know exactly what how they caught him. Like, was he was he, was he driving around in like the Solomon vote Solomon Pena truck? Like, was he? <laughs> like, how did they catch him? I want to know. Like, yeah, he was. He apparently was there. He paid these people money, so there was a, a trail, like a trail there. But what was it exactly? Did one of them, you know, give him up? Did what were they? Uh, did he? Did he literally send them an invoice for Democrat executions? Like, was that in the invoice lines? Like, <laughs> the content said the text messages. Did he have text messages? Messages talking about the drive by. Oh it's probably God. something so like that. It gets it, it gets even stupider. Uh, so he visited the elected officials' houses two days before the attack, apparently appearing at the home unannounced to complain the election was stolen from him. Oh my God, I didn't know that part. <laughs> People oh be my. fucking unhinged. Yeah. <laughs> like unhinged. That's, pretty, unhinged. that's really bad. Oh I was gonna guess maybe, maybe he asked like the the New Mexico uh, like political campaign agency like. Can can political executions be campaign write offs? Like, <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> I know you fucking Your lying. Donations. No, he did it. No, he did it. No, he did it. <laughs> I mean, that's that's NPR. It's not 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 my coverage. But so yeah, he visited that's, that's, uh, the homes that he would go on. He to- was he would later attack. Yes, apparently. Like was he was he was he saying like was he saying like. He you put out like cool. measuring tape and like measure the house. Like, <laughs> he was just no, going he was stolen from me. Hold on one second. Let me just check the wind. And... Bro, <laughs> he used his own gun. The comments berserk. Oh, yeah. One says he they matched the gun he owned to one around. This is the stupidest fucking. <laughs> oh my god! Like wow. Uh, as a defense attorney, this kind of shit is so frustrating because like there's a myth that TV will have you think like you know who your lawyer is has. It's relevant, but mostly it's what the facts of the case are. It's what you did. It's how the shit went down. And it's like, sir, what you doing? What you doing? How are you supposed to say? How you 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 visiting the scene of the crime? You let me visit it. You visited the scene the area. You were announcing yourself as their enemy. Like, yeah, the election was stolen. How would, how would you, how would you defend me? him if you were if you were his his uh, attorney? How would you defend him? How would I defend him? If I was him at arraignments, I would deny all of well, First of all, I'm going to get him out. I'm going to deny all the charges. I'm going to talk about his strong ties to the community. I'm going to talk about the fact they don't have no criminal record. Um, he's been involved um, in that's, that's the next thing. Then I might, I will put him in preemptive like mental health treatment. I'm going to mm-hmm. put him in a bunch of treatment and all these different things that on his next court date, I'm going to tell the judge how he's already doing these things on his own, leaning to his little whiteness. Then I'm going to talk to the prosecutor about a conditional plea where he's allowed to wear this time and these things he was already doing voluntarily on his own with the with, with the program. I'm going to use that to be counted towards it and to take the plea um, and have his record as expunged because... The conditional plea, like you, you plead to this on the condition that you do this, and then we get rid of it. And so I would just have him in the program on his own, and then take it that day, and it'd be done and considered done and got right. So I would handle it. Mm. There you go. It's a pro right there. Yeah, that's interesting. <laughs> or, or, I'm going to do all I ever fuck up or do something. Yeah. Like that. Yeah. I'm gonna request yeah. mental health treatment. I'm gonna put him in. I'm gonna, you know, ask them for a 7:30 examination. Plead like, you know, and this is this next thing, and I haven't found like in, incompetent on that. Mm. That's interesting. 
Interesting. Yeah, that's what I do. Hmm. Yeah. That ain't, that ain't gonna stop no show. I, I represent many of <laughs> you. Oh, I, I just I wouldn't appreciate it. <laughs> I wouldn't appreciate it. Sometimes. Like, but I'll figure it out. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what else went on this week? I think, um, Someone said, if I ever commit a crime, I'm going to LA with you. <laughs> and you're right. <laughs> yeah, same, same. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, I am good for I can't get you out of jail. That is. <laughs> Sometimes I forget. Uh, like, you'll be at arraignments and you'll be like, I forgot I'm nice. Like, like nothing, <laughs> nothing is better than like when you see, when you swear, like you look at the facts, be like, oh, fuck. Like, wow, shit, they definitely going in. And you're like, but this argument I can make, and when you get it off, oh, when the judge be like, yeah, at the end of the day, like, let's fucking go. <laughs> <laughs> That's my favorite. No, I don't have uh, a YouTube channel yet, y'all, but I'm working on it. David, I got I got two for you. One would be uh, Jacinda Arden retiring. I know made a lot of people uh, angry mm. and or confused. The other one would be what's going on, in America. Apparently, uh, you're out of money and you're about to to hit a debt ceiling, and all of us have to suffer because because of your world hegemonic superpower control over all of our economies. I've also heard that. Yeah, so. we're sorry about that. Just. If on the uh, on the debt <laughs> ceiling, the, the, it's all just a, a way to try and negotiate. Like, the, here's the thing: these all the companies that back Congress, including every single Republican, they're not. There's no way that the GOP are going to default. I mean, that would just destroy the economy, right? That would destroy all their backers. It, this is just a, a a mechanism to try and get cuts to Medicare to Social Security. Like that, that's what this is all about is is just using the the debt ceiling as leverage for negotiations for, for more cuts now it's so it's really about who blinks first like are democrats mm -hmm. going to fall for this and really think that the gop would go through with this or are they just going to push it until they're forced to cave to you know going through with raising the debt ceiling Yeah, it's a game of chicken a very very dangerous yeah. game of chicken and like david said like their donors would never want them to actually have the United States government default on its debt. It would be catastrophic. Um, would they potentially, I mean, I think there's enough, like the loons, like Matt Gates, Lauren Boebert, I think that they probably would. Um, so it is really, really dangerous. But um, yeah, what, this is the only leverage that they have because it's a divided government. Like they can't pass mm -hmm. what they want because the Senate will shoot it down. Biden could veto it. So these debt ceiling showdowns, that's their only chance to get something accomplished. And it seems like they're really going for cuts to Social Security. Um, so they're going to try to get... defaulted in the past, though. Mm -hmm. Like, was, didn't that happen in like 2011? And isn't there that other instance where like they, they held the government hostage for a certain amount of days and then a bunch of facilities shut down? I'm trying to remember my... There was a, a a government shutdown, but it wasn't defaulting on on the debt oh, okay. to destroy. Yeah, you're, you're thinking of the 2013 shutdown where Ted Cruz read Green Eggs and Ham, and that was oh sorry, not that yeah, not that one. Yeah, yeah that was huge just because um, the government shut down, and that was kind of like we haven't seen that in a really long time. But um, yeah, they're they're going to try to get Democrats to acquiesce, and um, I'm not confident that Democrats will be strong enough to like win this game of chicken so we'll see what happens um but it's gonna be it's gonna be a shit show every time the debt ceiling which by the way the debt ceiling is an imaginary thing we could just get rid of it yeah. we don't have to do this shit uh, but every time it comes up this is gonna be what they do they want to cut social security they've been salivating over it for a very long time specifically they want to raise the retirement age but i would recommend everyone go and read matt brunig's uh breakdown of the people's policy project because there's like 92 different retirement ages for social security um basically each month between the age of 67 to 70 um so it, it's really complicated they try to muddy the waters but at the end of the day anytime they talk about raising the retirement age that quite literally is a cut to social security because if you don't access that benefit until later in your life then you get paid less less over your lifetime so don't let them lie to you anytime it happens um just know that when they talk about this, it's it's a cut. So yeah, in France right now, apparently there there's all these unions have combined like I think six major unions oh, there to go on strike strikes. because, because oh, of so the cool. potential of raising the retirement age by two years. So mm -hmm. like France, like they get France out there, right <laughs> they, fucking, yeah. they 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 know how to use worker power to stop 
any restrictions or not restrictions, but any, you know, sort of um, changes to uh, uh, labor. And they have done a fantastic job of doing that. The rest of the world could, uh, especially, you know, the U.S. and Canada. Yeah. The last, the last time that happened in France with the Yellow Jackets and all that, there was straight up like the firefighters union versus the police. And the firefighters were straight up like lighting themselves on fire and charging at them. It looked like Game of Thrones style. Shit. Like, I was like, they, they do it different in France. Okay. We're so soft over here in Canada. Yeah. It's like, yeah. What, one hour protest. I did my part, you know, go home kind of thing. <laughs> yeah. It's much different. Yeah, I don't know how much you all wanted to talk about this. It's a little bit late news, but um, one thing that's been kind of bothering me is basically how many allegations have come out about powerful men such as Andrew Callahan and Justin Roiland. And it just, I'm still kind of like shocked by it. I mean, I'm not shocked, but at the same time, I am shocked um, just because I, I just don't understand why people can't be good people and they have to be pieces of shit. I am. Um, I don't know none of those people. Yeah, so so <laughs> Royland is one half of the creators of Rick and Morty. It's a very popular cartoon. I know Rick uh, and Morty. My I'm... smoke tray is Rick and Morty over there. Oh, okay, so so well, one of the two well, guys, the, guy, the voice of Rick and Morty. <laughs> um, it came out that he was like a domestic <laughs> abuser and all this kind of stuff. But like that was only the the tip of the iceberg. Turns out he has multiple accusations of grooming children, dropping into their DMs like 15, 16 year old girls, and then straight up being like, "I'm so attracted to you. You're jailbait. Blah blah blah. Come meet up with me." Turns out he's like fucking monstrously bad allegedly creep show um mm -hmm. and that was just justin roiland right the channel five stuff is still coming out to this day yeah. um new, new stuff is constantly coming out the guy just like channel five uh was basically like this really popular uh first it was a, a different youtube channel all gas no breaks then it became an even more popular channel channel five and then now it's an hbo like movie so like the guy andrew callahan basically just had a, a meteoric rise and was at the top of his game and then all these accusations have started to come out and it's like one of those when it rains it pours things like it's like one story after two story after three story and they just get like worse and worse and worse and worse and if you yeah. haven't seen his work he basically goes around to like crazy usually right wing like events and basically interviews people in a very not confrontational way to try and and elicit like the craziest responses from these people and yeah it, it's it's uh wild just the 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 complete shift from him having that hbo documentary come out to like two days later all of this you know start to come out yeah and nothing surprises me anymore mm -hmm. like at this point when it comes to to these things right like you hear about it so often and i think you know at this point when you realize just how much like how much in regular life just everyday men don't realize what things they don't realize is sexual coercion what they don't see is like in a, a, inappropriate they just listen to what their banter is and you see how easy it is for everyday men to have a bunch of incidents and things that they don't think of as that like how mm -hmm. many just the disconnect between men's perception from the women that they did they deal with in the same events you know it doesn't surprise me by the time you get to powerful men just overtly doing you know, so I'm like yeah 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 like that's consistent with all the history in life right like this how men give it up like yeah with power and authority they, they abuse it I mean I'm I just I can't say I'm surprised at this point it's unfortunate I mean you know we know how it is like they are on a long long list and they're gonna be a bunch more after that shortly I'm sure I'm sure the next one will drop before we blink our eyes like mm -hmm. every week we got a new problematic why somebody in trouble like Andrew Tate the other day? And you know what I'm saying? Oh, that's, his entire life is a problem. <laughs> Andrew Tate. <laughs> True. <laughs> True. That's, that he's in his, his own category. No, I'm bad. Yeah, he's down. He's down very bad. Down incredibly glad. Love to see it. Love to see it. Yeah, that's, that's funny. That's funny you said that, though, because in Andrew's apology, that's basically some of the stuff that he was saying, like, he never actually directly apologizes to the victims. And I think that's for legal reasons. Obviously, I think he's talked to a lawyer who said, like, don't directly take blame for this. Yeah, or you're admitting uh, to it. Um, but like he at one point is like, you know, I was raised to think that if you leave a bar and you don't bring a girl with you, then you're a failure. And I was raised to, like, believe that blah, blah, blah. If like, you know, she's into you, you should make the first move. And I don't I never knew that, like my that I was actually coercing people into consent and stuff like that. And like, let's open that conversation. And what really pissed me off is like, okay, those are some of the accusations. He has been accused of like coercive consent. That is a problem. There's also like physical and sexual abuse accusations. There's a, a, a new accusation that just came out about someone who was in a relationship with him who say who said that he was uh, stealthing her. Um, and like, it's not he's not addressing what, what, any what was of what like, her was what her stealthing Stealthy her when they pretend what? to have the condom on, take the condom off, or they take oh, the condom no, off mid, mid sex. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ooh, it's it's Jesus. a form of sexual assault, right? Yeah, yeah. So absolutely. She, yeah, she was, I did. Didn't know she, that was what she was, was like, called though. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's called yeah, Stealthy. Right. She was like, I was in a committed relationship with him. Uh, anyone who's like a fan of his or is in his inner circle will know who I am, even though she was hiding her identity. And she's like, and part of it is that he would tell me things like, you know, he really wanted, he would see pictures of my kids and be like, I really want to have a family someday, blah, blah, blah. But he should have known that I was very specific about my boundaries. I, I do not want to have like unprotected sex. And still he did it without my consent kind of stuff. Right. That came out the day of the apology. And, and I didn't see like, you know, all the other huge names and big streamers who've been half decent at calling out everything that he's been accused of like even pick up on it by that point the apology had already taken over and now that's like the new narrative it's like well andrew's already issued his apology he's gonna get to seek therapy he's gonna go into aa and uh, we'll probably see him in like three months maybe yeah it, yeah it's not that's why so much of like what we teach in society and how people feel about like it's why misogyny in sexism is so serious right because it's not even the inability to understand a concept it's the inability to apply it to a certain group of people because i have an ex-boyfriend who like sexually assaulted me twice same way right same sexual coercion um and the other day this is a thing that's been discussed no um the other day he he goes to tell me this story about this woman that um basically the exact same exact scenario of what he did right um to me and i'm thinking he's telling me because he finally gets it like that's why i think he's telling me the story because it's an exact like he's like oh i finally fucking get it because he's telling me all about violated he's a guy violated he feels and i'm like wait for him to be i'm like oh you get it he's like what makes no connection but he understands all of the different, you see what I'm saying? All of the different things that I'm trying to say makes it wrong to me and what you did. He just can't see it in a scenario with me because he doesn't see me as having, he doesn't see me as equal to him. He doesn't see me as having the same like autonomy and the same like right to stuff. So you can't, you know what I mean? You can't really force yourself on somebody who doesn't really have the right to say no or to not be with it. So he didn't see it. Like, and I realized like, wow, this is the fundamental problem with something like, it's not even like you're an inherently fucked up human being, but something like misogyny, something like sexism, unchecked, this is what it manifests. And that's what I told him, I'm like, yo, I know you don't mean any harm, but the reality is you are in fact, I'm like you are, I, I listen to you, I see how you perform and this is the harm that you do unintentionally because you are a misogynist, you're a sexist, you think this, you don't, you don't see me in you as equal in what you think about women. And that's what it leads to situations like this. Cause it's not like they don't, they don't inherently, like they inherently don't get it. When you hear them, they got the concepts. It's just the people that they're dealing with, they don't see as like, they don't see as, you know, people in the same way they see themselves, I think. And because yeah, it's, it, it's, be. it's, it's because it's internalized and they, in some cases, as you mentioned, don't even, don't really clue in to what they're doing. The, I think a lot of them view it as like a defense or as like a free pass because, oh, I didn't realize I was being shitty. But like, no, mm-hmm. no. You like that doesn't give you the freedom to be that person. Like you have to realize how your actions are, how they affect other people, how what you do is bad in the moment, even if you may not realize what you are doing and and the inherent damage of what you're doing in that moment. It's still just as damaging. So like the, the only like, you know, hopefully people like that once they once they're told, then they're able to change and learn yeah. and grow. And, and that's, you know, the, the hopeful outcome with uh, some people like this. But but largely, it, it just appears to be a, a way to enact power on others. And they simply do not care about how yeah. it impacts people. Mm-hmm. No, absolutely. And I'm, I'm for it, restorative justice. Like, I wasn't watching the Andrew Callahan apology waiting to see, like, X amount of tears or how sad does he truly look? Does he truly regret this, right? It's more like, are you, uh, like, undergoing the process and the steps of restorative justice? Are you going to acknowledge the the wrong you've done, the people you've you've wronged? Are you going to then work to do restoration? Are you going to make their conditions better? Are you going to improve yourself? Are you going to try and, like, make sure that others don't commit the same problems? Or is it basically, like, I want my career back. How do I get there? Like, how, mm-hmm. do, how do I get down that road to, to, to be a star again? Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Would you consider yeah. UK Navarra Media host as a guest? I've been on, funny enough, I've been on UK Navarra Media, funny enough. Like, what a, what a small world. I'm I, yeah. Jealous. Yeah, I was on there. I have a thing. I, I'm talking about Rittenhouse. Yeah, I have a, a oh. second thing with them. <laughs> so I've, I've been on there. I actually do. They're, uh, they're the, <laughs> the, the, on, the most well known UK outlet I know. Were hmm? you on there? Were you on there explaining how you would defend the Cal Hell no! Hell no! Hell no! Hell no! Hell no! Hell no! Like you don't know how fast. Like you know, there's a there's a such a popular misconception that like public defenders, I gotta represent everybody. That's not true. Or it's like this hard work to get rid of a client. Like the minute a client starts some racist, racist shit with me arraignments, I'd be like, oh okay. I'm like, judge, put it on for retainment. 
They gotta get a. They gotta get a private attorney. Like, <laughs> just, <laughs> just make it. A, just make it a call back to that New Mexico Democrat yeah. uh, shooter guy. Yeah, the Republican. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Rick knows he yeah. got shot in the Bronx. Child probably not. They're gonna be shooting no white man. You know what kind of time they're gonna do? Like whatever happened to the reader. I'm I, I be I be all in the chat. Like I'm like hmm, what, what, what they saying in the chat? What they talking about over there? Oh, they're they're all, they're all chatting, having their own conversation. Yeah, I be I be like look what they look, look what they saying. Like, yeah, I feel like the Facebook comments kind of moderated with time. Like we got a lot of Nacho not, uh, Nazi Nancy is I think what that guy called called her. <laughs> Forget. I gotta see this. Um, but it seems like he went away, and yeah, it seems more normal. So shout out to the Facebook people who are just normal folks. Like, I'm not really I, so comments, I'm, che- I'm checking the Facebook stream. There's seven people on Facebook watch. <laughs> 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 Hello to every one of you beautiful Facebook. That's why it's not that bad. <laughs> Good, I really appreciate that. I love that. Sh- shout out to the Facebook seven. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> it's like my mom. Why, and like, why, does, people. <laughs> why does Jennifer hate us so much? Jennifer McKinnon, like, girl, if you don't like it, why you don't go where to love it? <laughs> like, <laughs> my girl, agenda like, at all? five minutes ago, she was like, stop talking. Like, bro, exit the like, Oh, my God. <laughs> now she's like, this is terrible. Did it end up my own design. Like, girl, why do I have to keep watching this? Like, There's girl, nothing else on the internet. You're not being held hostage, sweetie. No. Do they have agenda, girl? The, the truth is no. <laughs> she's the stuck in a room strapped to a chair no. watching this show. She can't leave. Eyeballs fried open. No, I can't take this anymore. <laughs> my girl on here like, could you please shut the fuck up? Turn the <laughs> there are over 550 people watching on YouTube, over 360 people watching on Twitch, and we're we're going. We're watching. We're going. We're watching hey, Facebook. taking calls over on Facebook. Where <laughs> we will read your shit live on the air. There's Judy Washington. Hey, everybody. Hey, Judy. Oh, okay. Judy. <laughs> Holding Facebook down over there. <laughs> Man. Sometimes I will wade into the human support Facebook and it's always something I regret. It's just like one conservative shitting on me for being a soy boy. And then you have other people like LOLing below that. I'm like, man, they are just like sitting here fucking roasting me. These boomers like they're they're having a field day uh, like and it. feels bad, man. No, no, all the all the lefties are gone on Facebook. So nobody's there to defend I, me. I avoid honestly all the comments like I think like from the first episode like i looked at the comments and honestly it was always it was always mostly love and i told you it was mm-hmm. a couple of like mike and david's audience that'd be like i want to hear from mike and david more I'm like unless oh i'm like am i holding a rope around their neck and stopping them from talking <laughs> 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 so, so i stopped looking so i don't look at the comments but i went to send somebody asked to watch the show so i went to go send them a link so i go to go type in on youtube because I didn't feel like navigating surf. So I was like, let me just go on YouTube. I typed it in and I saw Rasmus <laughs> last one. So I go to the link and you know how it'll just show you whatever without clicking on the comments, like the first top comment. And mm-hmm. it was like something about me, like, oh, lay something. I was like, oh, love. Is that love I see? And I, was like, let me, I was like, let me go in the comments. I was like, oh, they love me. They really love me. It's mostly and love, I gotta say. Yeah. And then I saw Mudsling and I was like, it's beef. Yeah, <laughs> it's beef mudslinger. <laughs> I just love the the mudslinger eighty eight put on blast. He's gonna be oh, freaked out when he watches this, or like, they. Who knows who this is? I was like, I want you to know. I, I want, you all ever seen that episode? Oh my god, it's a show on um shit. It's on Hulu. It stars um a big a big white woman. Her name is like Addie. Is that her? Y'all know I'm thinking about. She was like on I SNL. She has a show on Hulu. Child, anyway, in the show, she's a, she's a, like, oh, AD Bryant, AD Bryant. Yes, yes, hmm. her, like her. She has a show. Um, and in one of the episodes, she, so she writes a blog, she, she works for a news organization. They put out articles online and she has this one particular troll that's just fucking with her, fucking with her, fucking with her, fucking with her, fucking with her all the time. So she goes and has like a hacker find his address. She goes and runs this man down this house, like knocks at the door. She's ready, like, to fight him. And I was just like, literally, I'm looking at the comments, like, 
I got some for you, mudslinger. <laughs> like, 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 <laughs> I literally, I was like, yeah, I was like so tickled in my house because I'm like, bro, literally every other comment on this video is nice and about me, all the top comments. And I'm like, fuck mudslinger and fuck the five people who liked his comments too. Fuck them. Like, <laughs> literally, you, you, should, know? you should memorize all the names of the nice people that like you and, and I, forget, no, forget, the know, no. forget the mud Forget the mudslingers. No, I, no, but I see, see, but see my followers know like right now in the comments, I could see Tyler Hackner. That is one of my followers that interacts with me a lot. I know I recognize my, they know. Tyler I know. is amazing. Yeah. Tyler's yeah. great. They know. I know. I know. I know Rath, fought, like fucking wrath. I see that. I know Roller Dragon. I know those names. Mm -hmm. I know a few of these people. I interact with people all the time. But yeah, Mudslinger. <laughs> so I saw a comment that really, um, it piqued my interest. I'm trying to find it. But basically, somebody wrote, I'm giving birth as I watch this. Um, <laughs> shout that out to that like person. That sounds like an How attempt to try to get on screen to me. I don't know. That, means a lot. <laughs> like that. that certainly got my attention. But I mean, if you are, Good luck. That's that is really dope. Yeah. I've been in the room when someone, when someone, when my girlfriend gave birth. It, we would not be on the internet. <laughs> yeah, you're a little bit I'm terrified of pregnancy. A lot, a lot of different ways the story could go. Yeah. I couldn't it imagine. Yeah, me, me too, and I can't get pregnant. So. No, if, let me tell you when it happened. Let me tell you. When, I ever tell you all the story of how, how I developed my, I realized pregnancy was actually fucking sick. And it's one of the ways they be lying to you as a woman, like just trying to sell you dreams, like it's not scary. Um, so it was picture it. It's 2009. No, 2008. 2008 or 2007. Juno's out. 2007, Juno. Mm. Um, and you know the scene in Juno where Juno's going to go get an abortion and the 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 girl, the Asian girl outside of the abortion clinic is like, you can't, your baby has fingernails. And Juno was like, she can't have this abortion because her baby has fingernails. And I was, and I was like, Oh my fucking god! The creature inside you has fingernails. <laughs> oh my! Like, I'm like, yo, it's so like, it's so that is like, that is creepy. It, it, it annoys me. That makes that it real like, because you're a woman. They act like sometimes, but just because they told you about it, that it's not weird and creepy. Like this, your whole body. This been your whole body this whole time. Suddenly, one man comes in you, and now a creature is growing from the inside out with no other purpose than to get out, and it'll kill you to do it. Like, like, imagine laying, like, that would be scary. Imagine, be imagine, imagine laying in your bed. Imagine laying in your bed like this, lights off, and something hits you from the inside. <laughs> I, that's not terrifying. Like, I don't understand. And I keep waiting for it to stop being scary, yo. I remember one time, and people, and you know, women know it's scary, too, because they get real hypersensitive about it. I remember uh, in college, my I was I was staying by my big sister's house for, like, spring break, and her friend was there and had recently had a baby, clearly feeling, you know, insecure. So, you know, like I... Like I usually do, I go into my little. Why I think pregnancy is is fucking weird. <laughs> she goes, she goes to my to my brother in law, like so upset, like oh my god. I was I'm like, how you mad at me? Cause you grew a monster. Like what? What, what are you upset about? <laughs> I'm pointing it out. I'm just pointing it out. That is that is scary. And before med modern, like. Y'all ain't think about that. Y'all realize that, right? Women be growing monsters that, like, without modern, like, medicine would kill them, right? Most of the time. They'll kill them. Mm -hmm. Take them on the fucking game. That's a regular. Like, you grew. All this time in your life, you're trying to figure out how you die, and it's the monster you grew. <laughs> I, like, yeah, that's how you're, the enemy is within. I, that's, that's fucking scary. Like, no, it's, everything it's you say resonates now, because all. I just watched House of the Dragon. So I'm like, like I'm, oh yeah, Jesus! I mean, Jesus! Too many abortion scenes. I gotta be honest with you. I, I was I, and like one was bad. I don't need another bloody abortion scene torture. Oh yeah, that looks right. horrifying. Yeah, uh, oh, another one. Oh yeah, okay. During well, those well, scenes, I have to remind myself: this is a TV show. This is a TV show. This is a TV show. Yeah, <laughs> no, right. That's so this that scene so uncomfortable. where she yeah. walked out pregnant and she's like Dracarys and trying to get the dragon to. To that stood with me as I went to bed. Like that, that, that was on my mind. It was so fucked up. It's like, oh my god. I y'all want to hear a really unpopular take since we on House of Dragons. I know everybody thought that was super girl boss and badass, but I'm um, like, no, bro. Um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you why. Like, um, so first of all, like I get it. Uh, she's taking ownership of the situation or whatever, so this man don't get opportunity to make a choice for her, right? But like, um. So they haven't, like, confirmed, right, that, like, your child wouldn't make it. Like, we don't know that. But whether or not if you're going to die, you're making it a decision that you're going to die anyhow. Why not give it an opportunity for your baby rather than light him 
on fucking fire, right? But that, but, but if we even if we get over that part, even if y'all aren't prepared to com- convict her on that, her children were standing at the fucking balcony. Like your child, you let your children <laughs> see you get fucking rotisseried. Your children. <laughs> You chill, you selfish fucking bitch. Like, what the fuck? Like, she could have even, like, if you know you're going to go out, like, she could have told them bye. She fucking, her j- babies right there. Like, they had no, like, you weren't sick, you were ill. And just, your carrots. Like, like imagine, you know, imagine you see, imagine you see a pet, as far as you're concerned. Imagine you see a pet take your mama out the game. <laughs> and then like the next morning you go to sleep thinking it's all just a fucking nightmare it's just a fucking nightmare you wake up and your mama's hard fucking body is on the lawn bro I was like girl boss what the fuck is this you selfish bitch like, oh that's funny, um, oh, that's funny. those that's poor funny. girls that scene really fucked me up it, it fucked with my head to the person in the comments that says I sound like a Bahamian I am <laughs> 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 yeah, I don't know what else it. folks what else Anything else uh, happen? Any any other interesting, interesting hold on, shit? Since, hold on, but since we were talking about House of Dragons, though, <laughs> go on. <laughs> Who teams y'all on? Who y'all rooting for? I want I want to hear these thoughts. By, by the end of it, no one. I, I I had I had allegiances at a certain point. Like I only okay. So I'm a massive original Game of Thrones fan, and and I like I read the books, and I'm one of those people who hates how the show ended and all that kind of stuff. So I didn't want to mm-hmm. watch the new series. I didn't care. And then mm-hmm. all the right wingers and the neckbeards on the internet were like, "Well, there's a black character in my science fiction and fantasy. This is the end of the world." So I was like, oh, "Okay, I'm interested again. I want to oh see God. this. What's this all about?" I watched it. I was like, "Yeah." Mm-hmm. Like I, 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 I like it, for one scene. I'm like, okay, there's a a, a noble black character uh, in the show, and then like I never noticed it again. And I was like, okay. that's what all the fucking anger and, and hype and, okay. and vitriol on the computer was like. You Making know? them black is what made the show the the like the 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 mythical, the supernatural Jerry Springer. I love it. Let me tell you why. Because let me tell you what's so beautiful. Chef's kiss. You never in your life. You never in your life. Thought you'd see a bunch of white people shame a white woman for having a uh, for not having a black baby. You never thought you'd see that in your life. You never thought you'd see that everybody hot because her babies are, are white shaming the shit out of her in the kingdom. Like every time they see her, like I I love how to drive. I love I love the level of like Game of Thrones is is so strategic and so you know complicated mess. Am I drinking a margarita? I sure am, champ. Um, but yeah, Game of Thrones is super strategic, but House of Dragons is just mess, just petty <laughs> drama and mess, just just, just mess. Just, mm, you know she be fucking the help, right? <laughs> like, 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 all of House of Dragons is. You know, I heard she was out there fucking up her uncle. <laughs> like, like, the whole House of Dragons is all the entire House of Dragons is. Y'all know Renair is a hoe. Mm. Like, <laughs> that's, that's true. A there's hoe. no strategy. There's no birds. There's no plots. There's no like, you know, this. Oh, they've been thinking about this for a long time. It's Machiavellian. They're going to take down the whole throne. It's just like, oh, shit. Yeah. It's just Teddy Jerry Springer <laughs> this is happening. Shit. And mm-hmm. I love it. I love it with all my heart. It's exactly my kind of drama. And everybody's fucked up. I don't think there's, is there any, you know, I will say this. The the man who played Viserys acted his ass off. That man acted really his good. ass off. Oh, yeah, he yeah. He was like, fantastic. Really his yeah, ass guy. off. First of all, Watson, you underestimate me. I am big. <laughs> I sure I am. It's called multitasking. <laughs> um, <laughs> but but is everyone is like, Isn't that the whole point of the show? <laughs> Viserys is amazing. First of all, that Beetlejuice. Oh my god! Why they got that man looking like that? Like I have never in my life felt so bad for a rich white monarch colonizer. Like every episode, I'm like, I can't believe like. That man that has was, it. That he, was gout personified. It was so bad. I was sick for him. Every episode, I couldn't fucking believe he was alive. Wasn't, I'm like, his, yeah. wasn't his whole deal the reason to, he was like probably maybe the one likable character on the show is that he didn't cause any conflict and he largely like, you know, he caused all the conflict. He's a whack ass king. He's a nice guy. He's a nice daddy. Like, he's a whack. He's a very the, nice the, guy. Realm, <laughs> the realm was in peace while he what reigned. Peace? What peace? There was peace in the realm. That was the it whole was more thing. more peace than, than how it left after you died. He he was upset. He was upset that um I remember there was a, a scene where he was upset that like you know he was worried that he wouldn't be remembered and one of his like uh uh hands said something like the reason you're worried about that is because there's peace. You weren't a wartime king, everything was good. 
Like, would, would you rather there have been some big war and you're remembered as some wartime hero, but everyone's mm. life is shit? Yeah. That's what I remember from that mm. scene. That they, they, They're supposed to be saying that, yeah, I mean, oh, he causes all the problems, I yep. guess, by uh, marrying his daughter's best friend. Well, yeah, there, there are some <laughs> problems there for sure. Bro, I hate it. Like, okay, first of all, they began to lack the memory. There was, the, and let's not act like I can't remember what the fuck them crab shit that was happening though in his time. They tried to get real, <laughs> like, get real technical about the jurisdictions to make it count. But nigga, there was war. No, okay, let's let's stop there. They had problems, all right. It was going on for years, bro. That counts, all right. That's one, two. Um, listen, I'm on Renera's side for lack of like where else to be, but mm-hmm. yes, yeah, summer. It, yeah, but however, it, there's no fucking reason why old boy uh, Viserys needed to go make her make her um the heir and it's like you just panic for a second like obviously you're gonna get a new bitch relax i understand you feel bad like you know her mommy just died but go chill out bro you're gonna have more churn like i was a little weird how like he yeah he had the heir and then he had then he had a wife and a kid like why did you do this so quickly and it made no sense it made no sense like bro like what are you what are you doing like just a silly impulsive foolishness and what i don't and that's the thing that like annoys me about like the whole renera claim is like bro that's arbitrary. You don't have no real, true. Your daddy created this. Is not a like a he created this claim for you. Like let's just let it go and call out for a fucking day from a long time. Like he should have been undone that from the minute he had he married old girl. But he shouldn't have done that. That was his second big move. Um, his big mistake marrying um what her name is Hayden bitch Allison. Um, Allison, yeah. Yeah, he shouldn't have done Allison. that. Allison, yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, oh, she got. I couldn't back. remember her name. <laughs> She's a real hater. That's her only problem. She just mad that Renera got all the cute guys. That's all that's about. She mad because she got to fuck Beetlejuice. That's <laughs> ain't, nobody, ain't nobody but your daddy made you fuck Beetlejuice. Go take that up with him. Go take that up with him. That's your daddy. Don't know that daddy. Don't give a damn about you. No, and I feel for with that. That got a you Beetlejuice. I, I feel a way as well. But no, if he hadn't done that from the minute he had his kids with Allison, he should have just gone and, and, and reversed this decision. But are you doing all this drama and shit? And Renera don't ever want to play her position. And also, it was another third bad move. He might as well have just let her marry Damon because they did all of that, all this conflict, all these problems to cause her to avoid marriage just so she don't marry Damon. You have a marry this man she don't want to go marry, create all this hocus pocus, and then eventually y'all get to a position where she needs to be with Damon. Anyhow, that's the strong her strongest claim because again, she done, you should have just done that. What the fuck? Now we gotta and the only re- again, the only reason I'm on Renera's side is because there's nowhere else to be. There's nowhere else to be, and also. Renera does a bunch of bullshit, and I don't be having time for her. Like, get to cracking. What you got dragons for? Light the fucking place up. How you gonna stand here? Like, what are you talking about? What are you talking They done stole your shit. Like, go run up on this place. Like, there's no reason why Otto Hightower is supposed to be able to get there. Like, that there and be negotiating with y'all on the bridge and leave and go mm-hmm. back. Talking about he making offers. Take his head off his fucking body. That's one. And then how... You know that these people have now usurped your throne. They done what they was getting ready to. They literally cooking all the little the leaders who wouldn't get up, get down with them. Like old girl just barely narrowly escaped. They out here ready for war. They making threats to you. You know how they go. They never fucked with you in the open. And you and you suspect you're not even showing your mind whether or not they killed your daddy. And now you think it's a good fucking time. Your your, your bastard children that they've hated from time that they tell you they hate every fucking day. Now you say hey. Let me go let him go take a trip on dragons back down there to go. Ma- what the fuck, bro? What you think you got all these soldiers for? I was like, the minute she did that shit, I was like, she ain't never seeing that little motherfucker again, bro. You're mm-hmm. never seeing that baby. And now, now you want to get serious. Now your son dead. Now you want to look. You should have been on that fucking type of time from time. What's wrong with you? What you waiting for? What you got these dragons? This this your only, you don't do nothing else. You don't have a day job. Your whole life is about protecting <laughs> this one little clan. Like, you supposed to have been cooking. You supposed to have been cooking. What the fuck you and Damon out here doing? Y'all don't have shit else to do but plan for war with them now war coming your caught lacking you down a son off top war ain't even started you down a son you're down in air you're down in air bro that's fucking crazy what a whack ass team to be on but I'm there nonetheless because I don't respect a hating bitch so fuck Allison <laughs> you gotta uh, upload that <laughs> yeah well, so that was like beautiful that was beautiful you should do Game of Thrones reviews is what you should do any of you do any of you know what happened no, yeah, the, we're, not we're not going there. We're not going there. No, 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 like, no, 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 where that, that starts the whole problem where, where you know Rhaenyra and Alicent are finally starting to maybe call a truce and Alicent starting to be okay with Rhaenyra 
you know, taking the claim. And then Allison sits on that fucking bed while uh, yeah. uh, he's on his death. The king's on his deathbed. And she fucking thinks he's talking to her you know. when he's talking to his daughter. You know, that pisses me off. So much. That sounds like frustrating cap. writing because it's like, this, ha, no, cap. like, what are you cap. doing? I know. Cap. It's, cap. it's all cap. She knows good and fucking well he was not talking to her. And you know, I know because no, Allison's a, no, Allison's no, a she, idiot. No, she thinks she's a true believer. She, she she's thinks she's a dumbass. Yeah, she, she definitely thinks that. Shit. She know that man don't fuck with her like that. She knows it. She knows. <laughs> she knows that the son fucking you would. When she you can't explain her expression in that scene, then, but like, she's like, she's in that. She thinks it's about her. She's convinced in that conversation she's convincing herself she's a lying cap cap but you know you know <laughs> fucking well. fucking that man is fuck he's been dead for 10 years walking dead and that man crawled off his fucking deathbed to come and tell you again i'm not gonna tell y'all a motherfucking again that man dragged himself down the hallway and sat on the throne and said how many times am I gonna tell you niggas that is the air? <laughs> he said, Yo, Facebook, he Facebook, Facebook YouTube. <laughs> Sorry. Like, <laughs> like, <laughs> but she fucking knows, like, it's cap. He's full of shit, bro. He does not. Your son is a degenerate. Your son is a fucking monster, bitch. Keep it real. What are you talking about? Like, I just wish he would keep it G real, bro. Like, just keep it real. You're jealous. You're upset. You're upset about how life went down. The kind of shit that, I, like, Allison don't even have a legitimate reason to be mad. Like, and I want to say this. I started off the show give, shooting Allison a lot of bail. Like, when everyone hated her from episode one because they knew the backstory. And they're like, I was like, okay, bro. She's like a teenager. She's her daddy's pimping her out. Let's let's chill out. Let, not too much on Allison. You know what I mean? I'm like, let's calm down. She's she. They're wrong. These grown people are pimping this little girl. Like they're wrong for that. But then, like, true. Then, right? I think to myself, um, so say for whatever reason, you fuck your friend's daddy <laughs> after after her mummy, her mummy just fucking died, and you marry him. Where do you? Find the fucking audacity <laughs> to have a fucking attitude about who she may or may not be fucking bitch. You fucked her daddy. You fucking her daddy, bro. You're fucking her daddy. What the I have listen. I was like, excuse me, what? That's why we're that's why we're upset. Because, like, are we hearing the dynamics? And I was like, you are so upset because you have to fuck Beetlejuice. That's what it, that's really what this is about. And I, <laughs> and my, heart my heart goes out to you. When I saw nickname. when I saw Beetlejuice on top of house, I was like, <laughs> I, I felt it. I felt it. I understood that I was like, you should, <laughs> what you should do is split Otto Hightower's throat. That's who you should be mad at. Like, take that out on him. Why are you mad at Renera? Because she got all the cute little boys in the kingdom, you hating ass bitch. And that brings me to the worst character in the history now if there's somebody that i really want to i'm ready like i will fight him myself Let me sir christian fight. cole oh. <laughs> <laughs> i fucking hate that was there any bigger turn than him like oh this guy's so nice what a Hold piece on, of I shit just gotta, I, just, I just gotta say it's really funny that you said sir christian cole because i'm looking at you and you look a little bit like oh, Sir Christian Cole. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> we are very you different look, on the inside. You give it up. Like, people, people tell me all very the time that I, I, that I I I remind them of Jon Snow. So you look like a little bit I've like I've gotten Sir Jon Snow, right too. Now. I'm like, I, 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 I maybe? I don't know. Characters. I hate both those characters. That's hilarious. Sir Christian Cole is... <laughs> Oh my god, he is the most bitch ass. Like I can't, I've been trying to figure out what the fuck his problem is for ages. I even ran it back to try to figure out because I'm like, yo, what kind of 17 year old pussy does she put on you that has you moving like this? Like relax. And at first I was like, oh, this is, oh, this is first time. Like that's what, and even that doesn't read, even that doesn't track. But I ran back the episode and my man said he used to be around the place fucking mad bitches. So, so what's, what's the problem? Oh, and yeah, yeah, he said that. I didn't when know that. I, I, was, I thought he lost his virginity, and then he's no, not an honorable no, knight, no, and he lost everything. No, oh, no I didn't know that's that. the worst. Oh. He, he used to be a peasant, bro. He was fucking mad, bitches. And I remember ah. it, was, it was talking about it in the episode where she where she kills the um, but she doesn't kill the white horse that she finds when they were when he chased after her and they having their little talk and walking by the beach. He talks, but I used to be around the place sowing his oats and da 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 until she gave him his noble status, blah blah. So he had mad. So, like, so that's the first thing. Second even weirder. Of all, less, this, like, nothing, none of his, he has no fucking grounds, no points. And I'm, I'm going to get to this. Let me, let me walk through this bullshit. 
you're the help. You know what's up. Like, you know she can't marry you. Like, what are you talking about? Like, I don't, is this not implied? Like, this was quiet pussy that wasn't understood when this happened? What are you <laughs> Like, I don't get it. And you can't act like somebody, bro, you, you de-armored yourself. That wasn't quick. She didn't just throw herself on you. You made a calculated decision. You got de-armored, motherfucker. Like, you was the <laughs> Next time. And Probably would have taken an hour, to be honest. And I see in the scene, you are not slanging, move away, give up my royalty and my name kind of dick. What you, what's going on here? Like, what's up? Like, I don't get it. She's giving the, the man the best. You know you could only be what you thought it was. I, she she tells him like, listen, bro, we got an arrangement. Me and my man said, ain't gonna be nothing. I'm only gonna be with you. like, what's the problem? He's like, let's go run off my honor. Let's go run off and go be with you. I don't I don't get it. You sullied me. I gotta kill myself. I don't I don't even I don't fucking get it. Like, there's no she didn't do shit to him. And how have you maintained an attitude for for 15 years? Yeah, and you mad at me? First choice. He was first choice. Dick. What is the problem? You didn't. You gotta want understand. You guys gotta understand. So Christian Cole's a big fan of Top G. He learns it all from tape himself. <laughs> uh, that's what it was. I should have known. Should have known. Should have recognized know, Top G. In my heart, heart. The minute he started popping that shit on the boat. The minute he started acting like that on the boat, when she when she when she raised it to him, she should have taken him out the game. And personally, for me, if I didn't kill him immediately when he got off the boat after doing that, I'd be like, oh, okay, I fucked up. I made the wrong choice. If when he was like, like, oh my god, who <laughs> got the whole kingdom got to know we fucking what's wrong with you? Like, <laughs> and then you, then you out here, you gonna murder my husband's side then on the wedding? I got yeah. I, Mm -hmm. I'm like, what? I can't believe he's still. A That's the Renera's problem. Can't nobody be my enemy in plain sight? There's no way nobody is gonna make themselves known to me and my, as my as my adversary and just keep living and shit. Are you fucking serious? I'd have been and like y'all that don't punish deaths the real way and all. Like, y'all just be letting shit rock. So Kristen goes the hell, murdering people's side dudes all in front of us all at the wedding, and he's still around. I'm killing him. I'm killing him. No one's saying <laughs> nothing to me. What is this? I would have been took him out. I don't know how you just gonna let them be. He just he just openly fucking hating on you every day. He worked for you and he in the kingdom talking bad shit with this bitch who's fucking your daddy. And now he talking about your children in the not in my kingdom. Not in my kingdom. It was Dracaris. Dracaris for breakfast. I was taking everybody out. What are you talking about? <laughs> and I, was gonna say, I, just, I don't know. I just say, you know what? They're dragons. I don't really control them. You know, that's just a myth. <laughs> <laughs> So I guess this week we're canceling Sir Christian Cole. That's who's been canceled. <laughs> yes, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah, hey, that's easy. <laughs> Do we have an uncanceled canceled? Any ideas? Beetlejuice. Mm -hmm. Who? Somebody to mm -hmm. uncancel. Who's canceled them? Y'all can please make suggestions in the chat. Throw people because I be forgetting folk. Yeah, I, I I'm bad with names to like. <laughs> yeah, I have no idea this, this week. Can we do a short-term uncancellation? Like we're uncanceling them for just a few days. And if that's the sure. case, I'm going to put forth uh, everyone who works for the Daily Wire who's been talking shit about Stephen Crowder. <laughs> yes. Short-term cancellation there. I'm canceling them again after just a quick hours. uncancellation as they <laughs> mm -hmm. continue to share these contract details and Stephen Crowder is bitching and whining about getting paid only fifty million dollars and have to agree to basically yeah, not be so conditions. racist to get banned from YouTube. I mean, or you can do it. You just make less money. That's all. Mm. You just have to pay a little penalty, and you can be as I mean, racist as you want. It was a straight up power move for them to come out and be like, "Yeah, we offered him fifty million dollars, and he's bitching." Mm -hmm. Like they, they, like they yeah. didn't, you know, he didn't reveal the number. They come out and expose all these details. Yeah, I, I'm down for uncanceling also, temporarily. Mm -hmm. As also, this is going on, you put it that way. Now that you put it that way, though, ultimate cell phone admitting to offering Stephen Crowder fifty million. That's, also <laughs> true, <yeah. laughs> That's so true. No, one hundred percent. That's why. How much cash do they have? I was. Just, yeah. I'm still. Blown yeah, away. I don't. I still get they made a hundred million in 2021, up from 2020 where they made 65 million. So 2022, I'm assuming they did pretty well too, if they could offer that. Okay, so well, they just all, spent. Guess, they just spent like seventy. They must have more behind the scenes. Like billionaires still bat, like putting money into this because mm -hmm. so initially billionaires million. launched it. I'm not sure if they're still there, but they must be. They just spent seventy five million on that Gina Carano terror on the priority oh, movie. What's they spent seventy five million on that. That apparently was the movie's budget. Now in movie making, you set. fudge a lot of those numbers and yeah. do things, but. Uh, that's a, a a lot to fudge if it's not even like in the couple of millions. Like it's got to be somewhere in the the range. I'm assuming, but apparently the budget was 75 million for a movie that made 800 dollars uh, in the theaters. <laughs> I could make that movie with a budget of 200 dollars, same quality. 
that's, <laughs> that's ridiculous. That is nuts. That is so that's joke. our uncanceled. Then any any ideas for cancel? We already oh, we, we did we did <laughs> Sir Christian Cole. Remember? Yeah. Like well, if that counts, I mean that was my idea, but. <laughs> Oh, I, I thought I thought it was approved. Oh, well, okay, we can approve that then. Sir Since Christian Cole cancel the cancellation uh, penalty is death. So I hope here, so. Here, but here no on Leftist Mafia, we bring you the news of today and the pop culture of about six months ago. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have to say it's a good thing that we all watch the show because if we did yeah. it. You know, it would have been kind of awkward. One person just sitting there, be like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Well, according to Celeste, fine, she commented and she's like, "I didn't watch the show, but I stood up and clapped after Ola." <laughs> Ola said that. <laughs> I have a whole. Who doesn't know? I I did I did react commentary videos in every episode. So there's a thread on on Twitter. Um, if y'all if y'all want that, I'll. Well, you did do one. Oh, yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I did, yeah, I did commentary good. on all um all of these. Yeah, so I'm gonna find it right now. Let me get it. Oh, you have to. That, that's got to be a segment on your show on your, yeah. on your YouTube. Yeah. Do you watch Big Brother? No. Oh, because that would be a good I, one. Should so, I? I, I mean, think you should. The last two seasons were really, really good. I watched I'm, season two of that show. I'm, I'm <laughs> I don't know, what, what are they on now? I'm They're sending, on twenty four. I sent the link to the that. thread to our group chat so y'all can put it in the chat um, if y'all are, are able. And I, I hate, yeah, you know, Twitter doesn't work anymore. So if some of the videos, you know, all your old videos now might not play, they'll mute out. Have y'all seen that? Like, start mm-hmm. running back. So if that happens, I am so sorry that Elon Musk ruined Twitter and I don't have my um, house of, I don't have my house of dragon videos like anywhere else, but I have them. So if y'all want them enough, if they don't work, I'll, I'll upload them like on Instagram. But mm, did, did, we, did we not talk about that? How bad Twitter has been? And I'm not even talking like oh, the right trash. wing. I'm, I'm, I'm not even talking the right wing stuff. Like I wish my, I, I wish my feed was just shitty right wing tweets. So I would have something to, to shit on, but yeah, all I'm getting is nonsense. completely irrelevant. Garbage viral video garbage that you see like on Facebook that I have zero interest in. I would mm-hmm. never interact with like people always shit. talk about like, Oh man, the TikTok for you page is so insanely relevant to your interests. Like how do they know exactly what you want to see? It seems like Twitter's algorithm is like, do whatever the opposite, the opposite of what TikTok's for you. <laughs> <laughs> Give people the absolute Stuff opposite of what they want to see. Is the fact that like the app, like I'm so fucking pissed off about the way, like the glitches, and the way the app doesn't run anymore and there's mm-hmm. literally no, no effort being made to address it and it's infuriating like the video thing as somebody who has a lot of video content on twitter i am so annoyed like i can't you know i used to be able to repeat retweet things now you do it and people are like the video doesn't play it's muted out like blah 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 it's running back i want to punch him like and the fact that you keep rolling out all these terrible changes to the app like for you the following page the views mm-hmm. all these shitty analytics shit. Yes, but fix fix the fucking problems, bro. Like, yo, crawl before you ball. Fix the glitches. What the yeah. fuck? You keep fucking up the app. Like, what is he wrong? fired? Like all the staff. Like, what is it? <laughs> and the, and the, the, fu- and the, the guy can't program himself. It's, the it's funniest happening. thing is, uh, ever since these new algorithm changes, which are clearly based on like whatever's viral online, just sh- throw that shit in front of everybody because they think that's gonna be what you know what what gets the most interactions and shit. Even after. Their king, Elon Musk, took over. The conservatives are out there going, I'm getting less interaction than ever before. Yeah. Oh, I saw, I saw that. I saw Cap Turd is complaining about that shit. Mr. Yep. Musk, fix this yeah. immediately. Yeah, <laughs> why, why am I not getting these many views? No clicks. Let me get it. Someone asked for Raheem cameo. I'll get him. One second. <laughs> By the way, every yeah, single, every time I put any tweet out, there's this one, like one spam message that's a different account every time where it's like, have you heard about this thing? This I don't know. It's like some crypto shit, I'm sure. But like, I always get this. I get more, way more spam now on tweets oh, than yeah. I ever oh, did no before Elon Musk took over. Oh, yeah. And it's yeah. just this. It, it's insane shit. Oh, look at this kitty. Oh, Raheem. Yeah. There Aww. was a moment when you when you turned your camera back on where <laughs> I guess Streamyard was like delayed and it showed like a frame of you without the cat and then all of a sudden it just cut to you <laughs> with the cat. And then the cat just oh, appeared wow. out of the air. Yeah. <laughs> uh, this is my Uh-oh. son, Raheem Marlo O'Luren. We Aww. love him. Yes, I adopted him. He used to terrorize the streets of Bushwick and fuck all the cats up. He invaded <laughs> a feral cat colony and beat the brakes off all the cats. 
So they trapped nice. him and sent him away to a place where bad cats. Turns out he's not bad or feral. He just likes to fight and he was hungry and he was FIV and it was talking about my baby bad. So I brought him to my house. Turns out this is my child. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love him. Look at the star. Y'all see this treat me? Look at that. You don't want to show the people you love me? Mm. He's got a little bit of an <laughs> attitude. I noticed that. Oh, cat, like, you see how he's proud of my... <laughs> but I see Olay, he loves you more than my cat loves me. My cat, she was sharpening her paws on her little scratching pose. So I go and I like I pet her. I'm like, hi kitty. And then I I walk away. And as I walk away, I turn around, she's behind me. She was about to grab my leg to attack me. I'm like, what the fuck? I was just petting you. Like I get no respect. No, my son actually loves me. I'm not even gonna lie, he loves the shit out of me. He puts up with all my madness. Like if oh. he, he just be in the house like girl. Mm, hi, son. <laughs> <laughs> Lance, we've got to see Chico now. Is uh, Chico there? Come, oh yeah, I know. My dogs are like in the other area. I locked them out of the room. Your dog? Well, That's two well, dogs I'll, and a I'll cat. See if I can lure him. I'll try to lure him with food. Oh, lady, you have your uh, Colin show today or no? I. So it's up to y'all. I did like a special edition um, before at six o'clock for like law students to ask me questions and stuff. Um, so hmm. if people really want me to do um, tea time, like I can still do episode tonight after we hop off air. It's up. It's up to them. I, I like it's. It's up to what people. If y'all really want me to go in there and talk mess, I will. Um, <laughs> I just want to make sure that, that you'd be uh, that you're plugging it if you are going to go live. Yes. No. They got to tell me. Raise more noise on Twitter about that broken video thing. I've been bitching about it. I don't stop bitching. What you mean? Perplexed. I have been bitching about the, the broken video thing. I complain all the time till I'm blue in the face. Don't nobody listen to me. Elon Musk don't give a fuck about this app working. <laughs> yeah, it's just going to be broken. It, it's, it's on Safari. It barely works anymore. Um, it just, it'll load endlessly. It's just, it, it's trash now. It's garbage. Yeah. Has he introduced a single change that's been good? No. Oh, hi, Chico. Uh Oh, did you hear how uh, Twitter officially changed their developer rules? Uh, basically killing all those oh. Twitter clients. Twitterific is done now. What all is those oh, really? Twitterific. Are dead. Yep. Twitterific. What? Yep. Can't can't make a third party Twitter client anymore. What's the purpose of that? Oh. So that, that they have full control over like the timeline? They were able to basically get around showing ads in those. Mm, and yeah. yeah, you could show time like, the timeline differently. Yeah. Um. I. I mean, a lot of people liked using those apps, and and apparently, mm -hmm. um, there were ex accessibility features with those apps that Twitter doesn't offer on their own apps. So people who have, you know, accessibility issues, uh, mm -hmm. you know, were were using those apps, and now they can't anymore. But I you did know, not he hear about he that. Wow. He doesn't care about that. No, he doesn't care. <laughs> of course not. Oli, well, I'm curious what you're drinking because I, I want to see. It looks really good. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Cut her at a good time. <laughs> looks like peach, peach something. Yeah, what flavor is that? Mangorita. Mangorita. Mango. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Sounds okay. That sounds really good, actually. <laughs> I know, God. You're yeah. making me want one. Shit. Mango anything. It's good for I, me. I love mango. I do left this mafia in the most comfortable of formats. I was like, I'm gonna get me a little drink. I'm gonna get me a little special one. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, just for this. <laughs> yes, down the wrong pipe, Steven, is exactly. So, does anybody have anything they want to say to us, ask us, or us to talk about right quick before? Tell us now. Speak now. Oh, yeah, you got to do your show. I keep forgetting you have an episode. No, I don't, I don't necessarily have to tonight because I did an episode earlier, so I'm off the hook. Oh, nice. <laughs> I did it at six o'clock today. So I get, cause I want, I, I had a bunch of law students asking me questions in my DMs and I was like, I could kill two birds with one stone. Let me just do an episode and put mm. some lawyers on and people can, you know, and that's what we did. So I did that. That's awesome that you did that because yeah. it's so difficult if you don't know anyone in your life, like where to even begin. Yeah. Like I was the first uh, college student in my whole family. So yeah. I had no fucking idea. And I, and I dropped out of high school. So I had no idea what I was doing. Like after I got my GED, I'm like, uh, I don't even know what the fuck a credit is. Like, wh how, where do I even begin? They put me in elementary math. So to have that as a resource is invaluable. Good. I'm glad that meant good. That makes me feel like I'm doing, I'm doing worthwhile things. Like, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I was like, yeah, let me answer some questions. Hmm, I want to know question. everyone is the hobby. Smoke. Um, smoke. Mm. What do you uh, all do? For I, play, I play video games mostly as a hobby. Same. I smoke. <laughs> I, I do that when I play video games. Yeah, I, I do that. I, I usually smoke while I play. 
Like, yeah, no, I um honestly, let me see. As a hobby, hobby. I spent all my most of my money on smoking, um, art and plants. <laughs> oh, and plants. Yeah, we don't. Yeah, yeah. well, yeah. So, <laughs> however, you spit it. <laughs> like, like, yeah, like, I bought a lot of plants, a lot of books, a lot of art. Yo, y'all want to see these new art pieces that I just got that are gonna get it Friday? That are so fucking. Yeah. Dope. Yes. Yes, I want to see them. Oh, oh my god, I, I need some I, art in my place. My walls are bare. <laughs> are they <laughs> not my walls? I live David, I wanted to, to quickly ask you, like, are you guys losing your health care? Is, is that happening? So I did a video on this this week. Check the channel. Okay. Um, so this is what's happening. Doug Ford is, so there already are, okay, basically Doug Ford is expanding the ability to uh, have private options for certain procedures. Oh, fuck. Uh, but it's it's still covered under o OHIP. OHIP is our universal coverage. But they are, these private facilities bill the province more than a regular hospital would and they are so the, the issue here with the healthcare so there's like you know some wait times for like uh, cataracts for like knee surgery that kind of thing and the issue isn't a lack of rooms to do the procedures the issue is a lack of staff there is something called bill 124 in Canada where nurses essentially are being incredibly underpaid and their uh, pay has risen only 15% over the last, I think, 10 years compared to police and firefighters that their pay has risen 30%. So basically, nurses are asking to make, you know, at the very least, you know, parity just with other public yeah. services. So but because they're not getting that, they are leaving in droves. So there are massive gaps in our healthcare industry in terms of a lack of nurses now. Uh, and that is leading to, you know, issues with wait times and, and, and emergency room over, um, overcrowding. So that is the, you know, the idea behind introducing these these private uh, facilities to have some of these procedures, but again, they're just going to be taking staff from public hospitals. So it, it, it's not going to solve any problem. It's just going to move people around. And there, this has been shown before in other provinces that have tried to introduce uh, private options for certain things like MRIs in Saskatchewan. They tried that, and wait times actually went up because again, the issue is staffing. Mm -hmm. The issue isn't a lack of facility. Mm -hmm. So there is this, you know, further encroachment uh, of private entity into Canadian healthcare. And of course, Doug Ford behind the scenes, very influenced by the lobbying group from private uh, healthcare industry. So that is why he is implemented. The only person, the only people this is benefiting at all are private healthcare executives. Mm -hmm. And that is why he's doing this while pretending he's addressing, you know, the healthcare issue. So it, it is, it's just continuing to normalize private healthcare when the issue is just a lack of funding and a lack of really the, the lack of wages for nurses who have insane jobs, work incredibly insane hours, and they're just not getting the respect that other professions in public services are. That's all. Like on the poor, okay. continue. Y'all want to see my art? <clears throat> oh, want to see my art? Oh yes, yeah, yeah. Cool. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Well, first, this is my living room, so y'all could like a piece of my living room, so y'all could see like how it's gonna go now. Okay. Let me show you my art. So y'all have a lot of DBZ art, like Dragon. I have a lot of Dragon Ball Z art. I have a lot of Boondocks. But I got like Huey and That's Riley really nice. and Boondocks commissioned. Like you see that in Dragon Ball wow. style. Like, look at that. Where'd you commission like, that from? I commissioned it from, let me tell it. Let me plug y'all the artist. He is fucking yeah. amazing. He is amazing. So on Twitter, on Instagram, he is YB the art trapper. So like, this is how, this is his account. He is fucking amazing. His art is so dope. He'd actually, and I was um also thinking about buying this from him. This is Majin Buu. Like, oh, I like that. Yeah, like, listen. You know, a nerd. So anyway, I can't wait till it comes. And he did it in a day. He'd already done the art and sold it. And I commissioned him and he redid it. Like, he made it and he did it in a day for me. Completely drew, drew and painted over. And it's going to get her Friday. It's going to be Friday. I'm so excited, and I have, I have I have some new art to hang up. Like I have my biggie, I have to hang up because I just got my new Tupacy, my biggie. And mm -hmm. when yeah. I just got my Tupac, I'm gonna frame it. My my apartment's so wavy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Lance and Matt, I don't think you guys answered. What are your hobbies? What do you guys do for fun when you have free time? Uh, in the winter, I like uh, snowboarding if we're able to, because uh, I live in BC. So I'm in this weird part of the world where you can be on like the beach and it's sunny, and then go to the mountains in the same day. It's pretty. It's pretty wild. I don't know anywhere else that has that. It's pretty, 
pretty bonkers uh outside of that i too enjoy uh video games i like reading uh, i also enjoy uh, uh the motion picture uh one frame to another um i'm actually someone who likes i'm one of the few people who still likes movie theaters i, I like going to a movie and then mm -hmm. like seeing like a really scary movie with like other humans and hearing the screams and shit i i find that or laughing or going to a comedy and having a whole bunch of people laughing like i, I find that shit fun as hell i still like it i took um, myself in a like movies it. last weekend oh yeah what'd you see I went and saw um, Megan. Okay, I was gonna. I was it Megan? Did you like yeah. it? Yes, actually, I thought it was gonna be like trash. That's what I thought people were saying. I was like, let me go watch this for mass, even though I'm scared of dolls. But I'm not scared of like I'm. I'm terrified of dolls. I don't know if I've ever told you this. This is my life fear. But when you say that, people usually be like, oh, I know you're real scared of Chucky and them. No, because Chucky's honest. So I at least appreciate like. This doll, I know this bitch is alive. <laughs> not perpetrating. She is alive. I know she is dangerous. Look at this. I, I, I'm up on her. At least she not gas like me. Like the rest of these damn dolls. Um, but I watched that. No, <laughs> yeah, look, I want to see that. That looks good. Yeah, let's go watch I, it. I go. thought it looked like trash, but good trash. It looked like fun. Yeah, it was yeah, like a stupid, like fun movie. Old girl from Get Out. Um, you know the girl from Get Out who's from Girls. She's in, she's the star. Of this yeah, one. yeah, yeah. She's the star. She yeah. plays a oh. good white woman. Like she really does that. I mm. I would trust her in real life at this point. Like she's, like, <laughs> she's not even evil in it. She's just like I don't trust you no more. Mm -hmm. <laughs> she's really evil and get out. Eat, bruh. Listen, she's get out. That. Yeah, she was. Get out. When when did y'all see Get Out in theaters? Yeah, I I didn't. I, see, I, I saw that. I think I did. Yeah. Who did who did y'all see it with, and how was the experience when you went to go see Get Out? What were people saying in the theaters? What was the reaction? What was the commentary of the person you went with? I went with a pretty multicultural crew. That was where the question was going. I think it was like uh, I was the only white guy, but there was like one of our best friends is uh, uh, Indian, one is uh, Korean, one is black, and everyone was pretty blown away by it. I think uh, what was neat is a lot of people, especially like, you know, other white people were like, was that going after progressives was were the bad guys progressives in this were they like you know like liberals and they were was liberals like, specifically yeah absolutely they were like that was, <laughs> I was like that was the point you know the 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 white liberal who's just like oh well, you know i voted for obama by the way and I, uh, <laughs> that and, scene and was and so oh my it god it's just like yeah. ah yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> So it was it was really neat to see that like I I'd never seen that in a movie before I was I was like there's creepy elements of this that almost feel like some really cool old Cronenberg body horror film and then there's parts of this that like I'd never seen before I'd never seen this issue or these kind of topics tackled in like you know surreal horror. Mm -hmm. What about you, David? Who'd you see it with? Uh, my girlfriend. Well, we we both enjoyed it. I don't remember like any specific commentary, but we we were both yeah we really enjoyed it. Like we were kind of blown away by it as well. I, I I went to go see that movie with a white guy, and it was smoke from beginning to end. It was stress. It was <laughs> like <laughs> we never spoke a fuck again after, after really? the in the cab, y'all. It was too much? smoke from begin. Like, bro, like I'm telling you, just everywhere. Like, I don't. It's crazy if I watch some of white people and they just see that entirely different. And he just was in the car saying wild shit, just like you know, Lil Wayne don't support a Black Lives Matter. I'm like, nigga, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> no, I didn't know. He just got in the car and just started saying crazy shit. I'm like, well, my takeaway from this film. Like, oh my yeah, god, like, Jesus. That's, why, that's what I think. You know, there's conservative mean, black people, by the way. Listen, I feel like, <laughs> yeah. Just so you know, okay, bro, very much so. <laughs> Herschel Walker, have you heard of Herschel? Walker. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, see, <laughs> not hmm, horrible hmm, in the comments. Yeah, no, but get out, get out was good. I'm also very much so good. Like I said, I went to school in West Virginia and Ohio. So I've very much so been the black person in the boonies in the middle of nowhere, white people moving crazy, except they're not even usually like liberals. They're usually like bona fide open racist saying crazy shit in the house. Like, and I'm just like, <laughs> like you ever like yo i i have legitimately been like the weekend guest at the homes of white people where it's literally like this is scary <laughs> like, like 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 technically like i shouldn't be here <laughs> like it's it's not safe <laughs> like it's it's, it's, it's it's not like you you know i it's mean not west safe. virginia is like you can't get any... <laughs> i wouldn't even go to that why, did you, why place. did you live there <laughs> why did i live let me tell you I, I was same, like, same. i will tell you why why i live there because my parents my parents did not my parents still live in the Bahamas. They did not come to America with me. And they have no frame of reference for anything and blah, 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 blah. So when we were looking into boarding schools, my mommy just liked the the headmaster on the phone. She she liked him. He just, 
that seems comfortable. Send, send me there. They don't have any knowledge of West Virginia. My parents have no fucking clue. They probably don't even know West Virginia and Virginia are two different states. Like, <laughs> like so <laughs> they sent me there. And mind you, you're black. coming from a black majority country. You don't even know. Like, I got to figure out race, racism from the ground up. <laughs> and this, whereas, like, racism is afterwards. Like, I remember, like, y'all don't know the kind of, like, overt comical racism stories I have from boarding school. Like, you have no idea. Like, Okay, boom. So I go up to this Woodsfield, Ohio. You'll never hear that again. That'll never come up again. <laughs> Woodsfield, like in the middle of nowhere. The weekend guest, like, like this. Oh, Lord. I was going to prom. I was going to prom with this guy. He's white. Like I said, I'm the only black person. <laughs> like, like, like. And so his family immediately, they're like, you need to come up to come up home immediately and seek wise counsel. <laughs> so, anyway, yeah, child. Like, how are we going to show the neighbors the pictures? And I'm not, that's what they said. <laughs> like, so, so where, no. um, where I'm at the dinner table and the dad is like, um, whole table, family table is me sitting there. The daddy goes, and I, I'm sorry, David, you know, Facebook, but I already done said the N word so many times. You'll be all right. It is not my, it's not my fault. That's what he said. <laughs> so whole table, full of, whole table, white people, Woodsville, Ohio, just me, guns all in the house. He going to say, Hey, lie me. You know why we call that road over there? Nigger run. <laughs> and I was like, Why? <laughs> like, like you can't even like, like the fuck. Why? And he goes, because if you get found over there, nigga, you better run. <laughs> whole, table, whole table, like <laughs> I'm over here, like that's old timey. That's old timey. Right? No, yeah. Yeah. are you sure what this isn't a scene fuck? from Get Out? Like this sounds. I'm this telling sounds you, I've lived, scary I, shit. I, I've lived. I'm telling you, know, you know, I was fuck. watching Get Out like this, like. <laughs> like, like, it's yeah, like, a, like, it's yeah. like a documentary, yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Like, I remember they held me up, like, they literally locked me in the study and sat me down and made me watch one of those, like, right wing propaganda videos about how abortion is there to, like, take out the black people and da 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 da. And I'm sitting there, like, wait, what? Oh, no, my God. You know the kind of shit I had to deal with, son. Oh, my God. I used to be, they, I, I am so I have an advanced degree in racism. Like y'all have no idea. Like that's I'm like why people why people be like, oh, these people ain't upsetting you on TV. I'm like, on what? At least I have an audience to say something about it. Before I used to just be by myself, like, anybody getting this? (laughs) 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 They used to torture me, son. They used to come up with all kind of shit. I remember the time. His sister, he had a he had a sister that was so super 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 racist, and the sister came up with this whole theory. Like she made she made a whole scientific theory around jungle fever, child. You couldn't tell her. She was telling the whole family I had some kind of sex spell on this boy. I'm like, I don't even know what. what oh even? my fuck! Yo, God. they were nuts. Like yo, they were nuts. The, the palpable, palpable racism. I'm telling you, like even down to the house, everything and get out looked the same. I was watching get out like. <laughs> I'm telling you, I was a like, guest in this stuff, and then the white guy next to me is like, "No, that's not gonna be." I'm like, "I'm telling you, I know white people. You don't know white people like I know white people." <laughs> like, I'm like, "I'm telling you, this is what's, this is what's up." <laughs> but like, yeah, no. We should fill like half an episode next time with like these stories because this is this stuff is just that's, yeah wild. Oh, I've got nothing but stories. I've like I said, I've lived a life. I've lived in Florida, West Virginia, Ohio, New York. I moved to this country alone at 15. And so I have a bunch wow. of it. Like it's it's very much so a lot of growing pains of like, oh, what's going on? Like, is this you know, like it's funny too, because I like rate when I so racism, it's not that there isn't that in the Bahamas, right? Like obviously we have different things, it, it appears differently. The majority you know, the majority of the police is black. So my mummy was always somebody who would talk about racism, like or tell me about it, like when I was a kid, and there are barely any any black any white people, like white people are the minority. In the Bahamas, so like from my perspective, I'm not saying I'm like, what the, fuck? what is this woman talking about? What is she running on about with the white people? What is okay, mama? All right, man. All right, Monique. All right, chill out. Um, did I get to America, and I'm like, I'm trying to figure it out slowly. We're trying to like, I'm in, I'm in West Virginia though, so they saying wild shit. I'm like, I'm like, <laughs> where, 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 where could that come from? That particular like, I remember the first time I even heard like a, like a racist like. I was, I was in Florida and my friend, like my, my, my one friend, um, he was saying all kind of racist stereotypes, but I couldn't figure out he was being racist and it was stereotypes because I was just confused. He'd be like, like, he was talking about how black people can't swim and all this stuff. And I'm like, huh, 
me rock black country from an island. And I'm like, where is he getting this information? Like, I don't even realize he's <laughs> making a zero. I'm just like, what? What is he talking about? He's talking about like the things they would throw out. I'd be like, hmm, chicken. I don't, I don't, <laughs> I like, what are, what are we saying? You say so you try, so it's like you're figuring it out from the ground up. So it'd be like that. And then I'd get, I'm in West Virginia now and I'm in these like overt, overt, overt racist scenarios. I'm like, what are you talking about? What you mean his bloodline? What you, what you mean? But what's your bloodline? <laughs> no, they would really give it up like that. They would really like, it was very wild. The commentary they would say to you. And again, I'd just be around like nobody's, nobody's filming. Nobody, no, this is this is happening. Y'all here. I'm telling you, the wise council. I, I I literally had to take my aunt and my uncle there. And these people really sat down and broke up the Bible to explain to my parent, to my aunt and my uncle, why um the Bible says that you know you're supposed to be with people, you're not supposed to be with people who are unequally yoked, and black people are the cursed people of ham. So why their son can't be taking me to prom, child? Okay, did they share that with your aunt and uncle just like they, unprompted? We we're sitting in the living room. They've, they've made us drive up to Boonies, Ohio, because they're really, like, torn up about this guy taking me to prom. They take my auntie and my uncle who are from the Bahamas and drunk, like, in, in the Boonies, Ohio. And the, they really break out the Bible talking about cursing people. Like, oh, my auntie look at me like, oh, I mean, I know they fucking lying. <laughs> like, let me get the fuck out. <laughs> That's insane. Yeah. Very oh, yeah. much that's, that's, like, traumatic, too. Like, that you is... Know? At this point, honestly, it's comedy. Like, I have so many, like, ridiculous, honestly, funny stories. Like, it, it, it's funny at this point. Like, big jokes. Big big jokes. Because mm. how? Because why? Like, hilarious. Um, but, yeah, it was a lot of that. A, a lot of that in school. Like, yeah, Joseph, you're right. Joseph said, I was once told by a white person that it was a cultural thing for black people to hang them. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. <laughs> That's powerful. That's really powerful. Oh, my God. Holy shit. Anyways, it's 11 o'clock on the East Coast. Oh. Me and Binder think, uh, or at least I know me, I'm falling asleep. I'm getting, yeah, I'm just <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry. Look at Binder. Binder's like, oh, I can't do it. Um, yeah, I don't know what's going Usually I could go late. I, I've done I, my own streams, I do till one sometimes, but then sometimes. <laughs> I just get this feeling at a certain moment where it's just like my my brain shuts off, mm -hmm. my yeah, body I shutting feel you. down. It's because I, I do I, I do the late flow. streams. I, I don't I can't yep. do the early streams because I got a, I got a day job. I'm like you guys who are professional YouTubers That's crazy. over here. <laughs> <laughs> like, a <Lisa> lawyer. I know yeah. you're uh, not. You don't even have a YouTube channel yet. You just said I'm talking about the uh Mike, David, and uh well Lance is a, is a Twitch guy, but he's got a YouTube channel too. Mm -hmm. I'm a, I'm in everything. I do I do documentaries on the YouTubes too. Speaking of which, mm -hmm. David Dole, where can we find you if you wanted to see more of your the rationalnational.com? And the Patreon page is the rationalnational.com slash join. There you go. How about you, Mike? Yeah, humanistreport.com, uh, patreon.com slash humanistreport. Um, check out my, my videos and, and like every single video because the algorithm is clapping my cheeks right now. It, it does this in January in particular, but definitely like the videos you watch from us. That'll, that'll go a long yes, way. That helps. Matt, do you want me to do roll call? <laughs> yeah, uh, YouTube.com YouTube, YouTube YouTube slash Matt Binder. Please subscribe. I have a lot less uh, subscribers than uh, Mike and David and company. So get me up there. Get me up there. And uh, also twitch.tv slash Matt Binder, where I have a lot less followers than uh, uh, Lens. So get me up there, too. Get me, get, me, get, get me in the range there. And oh. at Matt Binder on Twitter, of course. Yes. Y'all can follow me on Twitter, Instagram, TikTok at Miss O and, and Colin at Miss O'Lurin, M S O L U R I N. Um, La Tea Time with Olay is on Colin. Y'all should subscribe. We normally do the episode after. I normally do tea time after this, but I did it before the show this time. Um, but next week we will be back to regular and I might add a second episode for the week. Y'all should subscribe to my sub stack, Olurinati. That's my baby. I recently put out, I put out a new essay yesterday that I spent a lot of time on and I loved it. And it was great. Um, so yeah, I think that's it. Lance, and you can find me everywhere. Social media is sold at the surfs TV. Super easy at the surfs TV. Bye awesome. y'all.